welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Frober. Today, my guest is Jerry Pesh. Welcome back, Jerry. It's good to have you on the podcast. Hello, hello. Happy Again. To be back. I know. It's like, and it's been like, you know, we, we almost can go to like the beginning of the apocalypse and go like, we could go pre-apocalypse, new apocalypse, forward apocalypse. We'll just have like, you know, we'll just kind of, you know, it's like I'm almost like a, my own little baby Jesus reality on this whole thing here. So like, <laughs> when did Jerry show up? We could go by the COVID time. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, you were uh, my second guest ever on To The Fullest Podcast. We're so stoked to have you back this time. The cameras won't fail on <laughs> us, we hope, right? I don't know. I, 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 that might have been a gift almost, like to just shut me off like for a while. You know, nobody wants to look at me too much, so there you go. But I think it was, I think we really did like- There you go, like, there you go. We had go. a great like couple hours of talk and I really enjoyed it. So I was happy to come back and do this again. Yeah, no, it was a blast, man. You know, we've known each other for so long. Oh, and, totally. Uh, I'm a huge fan of your art and we just have a million stories to tell. So it's really, I'm really stoked to have you back on the podcast Heck with yeah. us, man. It's no. been awesome. Yeah, and as you can see, we got this beautiful new setup with uh, three cameras. It's uh, pretty no, tight. I, nice I noticed the switcher. moment I stepped in, like even the, the curtain was different, the back. Yeah. You know, you really, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's really beautiful. You guys are really rocking this thing. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's been a... Uh, it's been quite the process, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It started turning into a little bit more money than I wanted to spend, but uh, you know, you every money you to make money. That's how friend. it works, that's right? That's how it works. That's, that's the way it goes, dude. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I am the living epitome of you have to spend some money to make some money. That's the reality of it at this point. Because oh, everything yeah. I've got at this point is based off of me laying money into stuff to make it work. <laughs> yeah, putting out all that much art and going to all those conventions and stuff and flying around the country and. Dude, those booths are not cheap to, to buy a space in those conventions. No, no. Uh, and that's the thing that's even crazier. Right now, with no shows this year, uh, we have about th over 30 shows paid for for next year. And what they did for all these shows, because they didn't want to give us the money back, except I think at one show, like, said, we're cool enough, we'll just give you your money back, and we'll just rebook people next year when we decide if we're doing a show or whatever. Okay. But everybody else said... Uh, your booth is paid for for next year. You don't have to worry about that. And it's like, oh, because I, because you know, I didn't need that money for bills or food or anything like that. Yeah, I'm not making a dime off of any of that stuff. I mean, you know, you, you I laid out like, you know, I want to say at least thirty grand. So that's Jeez. that's you know, and that's just money I have on hold somewhere in a, you know, somebody's bank account that they're well. And the sad thing is, is I do feel for all these promoters because they do they work hard. They're trying to do the thing. This wasn't this was a this was a side swipe. Nobody nobody prepared for this nobody yeah. thought this was coming and then honestly as it was even happening there were shows that we were booked to do like we were at a show in um c2e2 like one of the biggest like you know shows in chicago and we did that show and another one of that company's shows is emerald city comic con which is in seattle and of course you know when this all started seattle was where it all kind of started yeah. kind of growing and we were talking to the uh the people running the show going well your show's in two weeks is it happening because we're already hearing about issues and they were like ah! they laughed at us they're like oh come on you must be kidding the show is so happening no it didn't it did not happen in fact it didn't even happen for the post because that's what a lot of these shows did is they they after they canceled on you they gave a date to say, because, okay, we're not going to do it now. It's a June, like, say it was a March show. Now we're doing it in August. We're going to push it to August. And now suddenly all those shows are canceling because they know that that isn't happening. So you get a double cancel because they didn't want anybody to really say, give me my money back. Yeah. Um, I do like it to a degree. I mean, yes, it was, it was a little stressful to have all that money be yanked out of my bank account and not have any way of, you know, uh, using it. Um, but at the same time, it's nice to know that my shows are paid for for next year so I could do that. But it also kind of like has been neat because this like this whole time since our last podcast, I've kind of uh, brought on a, a new uh, avenue of my own work is by doing these live shows each week. So that's a whole other thing, you know, because I do these live weekly shows Friday, uh, every Friday. And uh People have been digging them. It's been really kind of cool. We're like on week 16 now. And, uh, you know, every week I try and do like a theme and and we have some cool stuff that we, you know, that my fans buy from us on the page there. or They can get discounts or uh, I give up a lot of my artist proofs, which are kind of like a big deal because that's like those are like chaser things. There's only like three of each of those in existence. So uh, I get people that are uh, either sad they missed out on it when the 50 because I the way it works with my pieces is I only do 50 of each piece on the 11 by 17 size, which are like, you know, for example, like right here is a this is one of my pieces. If you look on the back, you'll see 
they're all signed and numbered, you know? So, mm -hmm. like, for example, this is number 450. It's a newer piece. It's a 2020 commission that somebody had me do. But what happens is once all 50 sell, that you can't get them that way. I sell them as a comic size metal, like the one that I, you know, that you saw yeah, over there. I got my Rick and Morty yeah, one over Rick there. Yeah, Rick and Morty yeah. that I signed for you when I came in today. So, you know, so that's kind of the way I've been doing my stuff for the last seven years. So as seven years of doing this, I have... I want to say over 250 pieces that have been retired to this comic size metal now. Oh, wow. um, so I have people that are like fans that, you know, I have some diehard fans that have missed out on something and they were like, you know, cause when you're, you know, that's the thing that I found really interesting is like, you know, when you gain a fan that follows you, not everybody follows you 24 seven. I, you know, it, it, that's the thing is like, I see some people once a year, you know, when I'm in Phoenix, I have a Phoenix fan base. You know, when I'm in, when I'm in Texas, I have a Texas fan base, but I'm not there every week. I'm there like two weeks a year, maybe doing maybe one show, maybe two, if I'm lucky. And what I find's happening with this show that we're doing is I have people that have been sitting on this broadcast for 14, 15 weeks, and they come every <laughs> Friday. They look forward to it, and especially now in this situation where you really have not, not much to go out to do because you can't go to the movies, you can't go, go to sporting events, you can't do anything. So they look forward to me. So I'm their entertainment for every Friday now, nice. and uh, they, they've become like family to me in a way because I have like, you know, it's like 60 to 100 people that show up every week on my, on my feed. And they talk amongst themselves in the feed <laughs> and they will like, you know, and then they and they make jokes about guys. You know, there's one guy I have to laugh. There's one guy just last week. He created a fake Facebook profile called it, like his name, but as his wallet, like his wallet was complaining about him winning, basically. And, I, and we still don't know if it's him doing it or someone else did it as a joke. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like it's like uh, Mr. Smith's wallet. Like, and, and, the, and the wallet would complain about them winning things and or say, hey, we won this. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. So to talk about just like, you know, that kind of stuff is just really neat to see how things have, you know, adjusted over the, you know, four months of being being stuck in this reality Dude. and doing the best I can to make it work. Uh, it seems like you're making it work really well. And, uh, yeah, I've been checking out your uh, your couch cons, yes. as you were calling them. Actually, I have it on uh, I have your Facebook pulled up right here there with you your go. current couch con. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so the way it works is, is uh, you know, uh, as I said, I have these artist proofs that, that people are chasing. Um, and uh, I only do three of each of these pieces. And uh, so, what, so, like, for example, like, that's a 2015 piece. You know, so that piece is old, you know, the, yeah. you, you know, so it's been retired for years. So what we used to do with my artist pieces, I used to give them to charities. That's what we used to do. We get a lot of charity events asking for things to donate and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, now I'm the charity because like I ain't got no shows. So basically I've been doing it this way. And so, you know, and what I do is I charge $60 shipped for, for one of these artist proofs if they win them. And you could see like all the comments, like everyone that's commenting on that, dips, dips, they dips, want dips. that piece. So what I do is, is I take by Friday. This is just this is just what Monday. Yeah. I still got till Friday, so there'll probably be twice as many names on this by by Friday at least on each of these. Usually we get between like you know sometimes we get somebody that just gets one name on it and that one person wins, but I still give them oh, like man. the drum roll and the win and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But then we get people that that, that all have up to like forty names on something, and and it's only one piece, so they all get in the system. I make a I have an app that like randomly brings up their winning name and I shake it and it makes a drum roll and then the winner comes up on the screen. It's a, it's cheesy but it's fun, you know. And then that person gets to buy it. And then so we've been doing that now for, like I said, for like 16 Shoot, weeks now. I love the Power Rangers. Thank you. Thank you. And a lot of these pieces are commissions, too. So it's kind of fun when you see people like I have sometimes the people that commission me to do the piece coming on the show yeah. just to see how popular the piece is. Uh -huh. they're like excited because they got the number one of 50. But this is like an artist proof. And the way it works with the artist proofs is the whole reason I created them is because when I was started doing the art on the metal, I didn't know what it was going to look like. And I didn't want to like just you know fake it i wanted to see so i'd have test prints made of these pieces and usually as i've gotten more you know uh you know better at doing knowing what it's going to look like you know after doing something for seven years i have a pretty good idea what a color is going to look like on the metal when it gets created yeah. but i still like to know so i would create these artist proofs as as a test so that way i wouldn't be giving the the person that commissioned me or the first piece like i would i wanted it to look as best i can you know and that was kind of the deal so we've been doing this, and it's been working out good for us. I've also, like, this is something you just came up on is uh, something I created as kind of like a thank you for my fan base yeah. because I had so many people, like, supporting us since we've been doing this. I mean, that's the other thing, too. you got to think of it like this. As an artist, right now, um, my exposure, for the most part, was my website and my shows. 
I've lost all my shows. So that's a big chunk of my income. So I have fans that have all come out and have supported me and have done this thing. So what we did is we designed this. I call it my my heavy metal club because that's the deal. Because <laughs> that's the deal. Most of the people that are getting in on this, they yeah. got a heavy selection of metal. They're carrying a lot of metal. Um, but I did. I, it was my way to kind of be a thank you because there's always each of these people that are you know fighting left and right for these dibs each week. There's always that one that got away. There's always that that you know. And I like to say, hey, if I can help you have that 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 number, you know, that piece. And I do it special. It's not a, it's not part of the artist proofs. It's not part of the limited editions. It's basically like I, I have a special sticker. I write the title out. I thank them on the back of the piece. I make it personalized because to me it's cool that they they you know they get something special and they deserve it because they they're supporting me. They're giving me money. Yeah. So I, I I'm one of those guys that loves. And I'm a collector too. So me, whenever I can give somebody something that's collectible and they feel like they're getting a special collectible, then I'm all over that stuff. And even the bookmarks, like you saw the picture, I designed these special books because I sell metal bookmarks all over the place. Yeah. But you can only get these three these three designs from the club. And even crazier is that CouchCon one in the middle. You can only get that one if you win it on our dibs for the show. You can buy the club anytime people want. I've had a few people go, damn it, I'm sick of waiting for random numbers. I'm just buying a damn thing. Yeah. Fuck that bookmark. But then <laughs> the most of them are trying for that stinky bookmark. They want that CouchCon veteran bookmark that they would because they've been with me for 15 weeks, 16 weeks, and they want to feel like they get. So that's yeah. cool that I get to like do those fun things. Like we, um, we did a new. I did a new piece the other day because I'm right now I'm locked in commissions too. That's the other thing that's been so cool is like I have like 50 commissions locked in right now. Um, every time I get like one done, somebody locks in another one. So my life... I, know, I was talking to you about maybe yeah, customize some magic cards I, I, or something. You're like, maybe in like three yeah, years. I say, well, <laughs> it is, and I feel bad for it, but it's the truth. I, I'm like, look, man, I got people like... And I and it, most of the time, they're pretty good about it. Like when I sit there and say... Because it is the natural thing. If somebody was a fan of someone's art, the first thing they usually want to know is, is like, well, what's a, do you do commissions? Yeah. And then, then they want to know, well, how much is a commission? And that's a big difference. There's certain artists, yeah. and there's certain good artists that I know that give their art away. They give it away for nothing. They'll draw like a piece for like 50 bucks and they're done. Yeah. Or there's people that'll date, then there's people at the other end of the spectrum that are like, I, like Olivia, where like, uh, you know, she does the most amazing Betty Page pinup stuff that I collect. And, and a commission with her, I can't even afford because it's like, you know, <laughs> five grand or something Jeez. so you know so there's that end of the spectrum so where does jerry try and fit himself well i started at a lower rate i yeah. you know i've been doing this now you know seven years doing shows and doing stuff so i i didn't start that i started off as cheap as i thought was fair for me to do it but now it's it's one of those things where i've only i've raised my rate a little bit just because of the fact that i know that if i don't i'll have a hundred commissions locked in i need to be a little more practical about it and and yeah, quite man, honestly I mean, business you know when i'm selling a piece for 50 bucks I, I don't think it's that expensive to ask for that i'm starting at like 200 bucks for a single character piece considering no. you know that people are going to buy 50 of these pieces and then you know so that's the reality of it a lot of people like it because i keep it low that way because there's going to be more people buying the pieces yeah. so that's why i do it that way um i've had people ask like what about a one of a kind or what are the, i'm like yeah i'm happy two thousand bucks it's yours and they'd be like nice and then they then they go oh I think it's cool if other people get those pieces yeah and then they suddenly go back to the two hundred dollar character you know <laughs> and it works out fine I, I I'm totally cool with that and I and mm. I honestly like it that way the only time it gets a little higher for me with commissions is when somebody starts making me do like things like their dog or something like because I can't sell their dog and yeah wants to buy somebody's special dog piece that so that'll go a little a higher and I even though it is a one of a kind I still kind of don't hit you that hard because I know that. It's not your intention to get something that I couldn't sell to other people. It's just not, you know, you just know that I'm not going to hit. So that's usually like, I usually start the, I call it my dog commissions. Uh, I start those at 300. And then it's basically like, depends on somebody who wants multiple dogs or like, I have a one guy that has me doing like the dogs, like in like a, like an, like an old school, like a, uh, like portrait mode where the dog you get the side shot and the front shot of the dog like it's kind of like the, oh, okay. the Sears portrait you know what I mean they literally want me to paint the dog that way and I was like alright that's cool <laughs> I can do that so you know but another thing that's interesting like with my commissions per se is like I'm one of those guys that like I don't want to be told what to do like I'm like you're hiring me to do your piece so like if somebody hires me to draw a character I usually just say look tell me the character you want if it's got some kind of crazy ability or if they have a costume version you prefer uh, if they can do some kind of special like you know, you know of course think of it like video games like as you do a special move do you want me to try and put that move in there is he a special weapon you want me to try and put in there other than that let me do my thing because when somebody yeah. starts going most of the time when people want like commissions they start asking questions like well i want him posing like this and it's like dude 
it doesn't work that way. And what happens a lot, I think a lot of people start visualizing like either a, a, a game or an anime that they like and the yeah. character's moving in the anime. Yeah. So they kind of want to capture that movement and you can't capture that in two DPs. It doesn't work that way. So I have to like try and, you know, th there's certain times where, you know, I have to, but for the most part, I've been very lucky. I have a lot of people that, and I have some return commissioners. I have like some people that have commissioned me for like up to like 10 pieces at this point, wow. if not more. Like I have one person that commissioned me to do uh, all my Harry Potter. Like I did a whole series of all eight Harry Potter movies <laughs> and uh, and they paid for the whole thing. It was all eight movies. That's awesome. Um, so, and, and, and again, those people, like, like I said, those are, those are just the kind of people that I love because I see those people coming around and they, they, they 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 love collecting my stuff yeah. so we're very thankful for all those kind of people so i bet you sold a ton of those harry potter ones too i mean harry potter is super popular out of all eight movies i think i have a couple left of um the second movie and the fourth movie and the fifth movie <laughs> all the rest all 50 have sold out yeah. that's awesome so yeah we're to the point where we actually sell because there's people that you know i know there's people that are completists and they want to get the whole thing so we'll actually sell uh the set as a comic size metal instead of because usually i won't do a comic size metal until pieces retired yeah but because it's so joined together i just do it that way that if you want to buy the whole set of all of them on a comic size i will do that for you you just got to buy it all together yeah and so and we have some people do that but uh eventually and i haven't done it yet but like with my artist proof thing eventually i might you know yank out like a whole set of artist proofs of the harry potter set or something <laughs> but that's like the super know, dibs that's gonna be a that's gonna be a hard chunk of change because that's like you know you know eight movies times 60 that's, yeah. that's like almost 500 bucks so yeah and, and some people will go for it there's some people that i know they're crazy well i'll tell you what even even crazier is um i don't know if i ever showed you these or talked to you about these but i had a, a company uh at the comic cons their their company's name is murky wood um they do wood they they do all these wood things and they approached me and we talked about doing i did a uh harry potter speaking of harry potter i did a harry potter <laughs> uh uh, metal inlay for their they do these cool book boxes they're like stash boxes yeah um and the box is made out of wood totally made out of wood and it opens up and has like magnets that holds the, the lid together and stuff like that and then my metal is actually inlaid into the book of each of the harry potter houses and then they actually um wood scribed in the back like the harry potter symbol and stuff like that so it's cool that's cool they're very cool problem is is that because we are not doing shows they are not as apt at doing like the online thing as we are so they were kind of like caught like totally like i think like i showed them on my page and my people and stuff like that ate them up and bought like i think i sold about like 20 of them like just oh, from wow. my fans but after that because my fans were already kind of tapped out nobody nobody else was jumping on them and of course the problem is shipping there's a lot of big you know, when you start shipping things like that it starts getting expensive because like yeah. you know the box itself is like 50 bucks so now if i got to ship it it's going to be like 70 bucks and so you know so all those things start going into play and it did kind of affect it so what was happening is my fans were getting like upset that they couldn't get these designs because they love them because they did these designs of each of the houses especially for for these pieces so what we ended up doing is a show exclusive for my couch con show is we were offering for people to be able to get these houses on the 11 by 17 size and we were selling each week i'll sell like a set of these like numbered like the same number because i only do 50 of each yeah and we're about halfway through those at this point and that's just you know it's pretty crazy do you have the Harry Potter ones on uh, your website or your Facebook? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? Um, if you go to the website, uh, somewhere on there, there's got to be a whole thing of the Harry Potter sets or something. Um, yeah, gallery has got to be. She, she, she should have some pictures also of the boxes so you can see what they look like on the boxes. Okay. Um, it's probably maybe in a store. Problem is, I've created so many pieces since I've been home, and she's constantly putting new stuff up. I'm sure you're gonna have to scroll down a little bit to find these things. Right. Let me see if I can find it here. Bring it up. Oh yeah, yeah, I found it. I found it. There you go. And it looks like Harry Potter. See the th yeah, that's Harry Potter. <laughs> Hufflepuff. Yeah, that's that's the designs. Now those are the actual. I think that's the actual medals themselves because you don't see the book. I don't know if she has the. I think I saw a book in here. If I go back, it's to like a it. wooden box. It's like it's like wood colored, obviously. But yeah, yeah so like, oh, the, and they're cool. They're very know, cool. So. And we had plans of doing other things with them. And it's again, it's like this whole thing kind of threw a monkey wrench in them because they're not, you know, again, if they don't have the 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 finances coming in to do. Yep, there they are. Is that the book right there? That's the books. Yeah, and it, I don't know if you look at her picture, she's probably 
probably got showings of them opening, close. You could see what the yeah, oh, yeah, look at that. You know, she does. Okay. Serenity does. My my girl Serenity does such an amazing job on the website. She works so hard. See, there's the backs. You can see <laughs> scrolling in there and all that stuff. And there's one for each house. And we do, you know, we do a whole deal. And a lot of people were loving them. And I'm not opposed to selling them. Like, because what happens if we sell them? I gotta have them create them because they're the ones that make them. Okay. So there's like an in between guy. So it's not like I could just sit there and throw them out at whatever price I feel like. I gotta make sure that they make their money and I make my money and all that jazz. But unfortunately, it just it's it's they're available. It's just a, it's one of those deals where the shipping is not cheap. So you have to like we even throw a code in there if you're buying them to get with the code. So you make sure you get at least the best deal I could give you. Right. But it's again it's 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 one of those deals where we're we're doing our oh, best nice. to to do it. And I'm sure once the shows come back, we'll 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 be able to you know go with them and even do a stained version. That so was it's like a stash box. It is. It's totally a stash box. So it's, if you look on the tip top of that picture, there's like little magnets that catch the the metal that they inlay in there, and it basically closes and it holds close perfectly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that right so, up here. And then you can put it up on your shelf. If, you, if you're trying to hide it, you could even just, like, the back of it looks kind of like a metal, like a wooden spine, the okay. way it's all cut out and stuff. So you can yeah. hide it, or you could just put yeah. it on display, and no one even know that it opens up, really. I mean, it really, you know, they're really cool. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, so we started those, and I'm sure there'll be eventually something different or more. It's just like I said, unfortunately right now with this whole situation, it's affected all these different companies. Not everyone can keep up. Like, like we're like plowing forward. We're, I am, you know, like I that's said. That's what you do, baby. That's the way I am. I was, I, you know, that's the deal. Like, I have a lot of friend artists that are delivering pizzas right now while I'm doing this. So yeah. it's like, I, I'm still doing me. It's just I'm doing it my, like, I had a couple of, like, friend guys that, uh, that reached out and are like, wow, you, you you're doing it. I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm not going to give up on this. I can't, I can't just, you know, I've got a house payment. I mean, it's like, you know, <laughs> right. so, so, you know, so all these things kind of came to, you know, we've made it work. And that's why it's even so cool that I'm here doing this with you again, because it's like, kind of like, you know, the world is tweaked, but I'm still changed since I've seen you like, you know, four months ago, even dude, it's, it changes all the time, man. And it's, who knows what the heck's going on Yeah, out there. But, uh, no, it's, it's, it's crazy. I, uh, I personally, I just, uh, I've stopped expecting to, uh, go back to work as an engineer. I'm totally a hundred percent in on this. We actually hit, uh, we got over a hundred subscribers finally, man. I thought, yes, that's awesome, dude. I'm very happy Congratulations, about that. It's man. moving up. It's that's consistently epic. going up every podcast. That's so awesome. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, like, I guarantee you, like, once, once we get this done, yeah. I'll do like I did before. I'll throw it up there. And now I got even more people that are used to watching my mug. So oh, on a nice. weekly basis, so they may be wanting to see some more. So this will be their chance to get a little more of it. Plus they love, like, I actually just, this is, I did a, a not a video podcast, but I did a, a, a another a fan did a podcast that's like a gaming podcast so they wanted me in on that they were talking to me about that for a little while and I, like I did an interview with them last week so it was kind of cool that I'm getting a little more out there with this kind of stuff so I'm having fun with it but you're you're the only person that, I, that I, I run for you man I'll do this stuff with you anytime dude we're gonna have you as a regular guest man you just gotta come on and show us your new pieces totally. and what you're up to and totally. everything totally. man I love having you on it's so and much you, fun you always bring in such killer art and everything thank you thank you and speaking of uh, gaming podcasts you should check out uh my homies Anthony and Ray at TeamRunk.com, man, they've been doing this uh, gaming podcast. Oh, cool. They just started, and uh, they do a thing where you can hop on with them, the Discord, I believe, and also, uh, like, I think on the weekends, like, they, they play online, ah. and they open it up so you can go jam with them online. Ah. If you have a, <laughs> yeah, and they'll like, they'll, like, promote you and stuff. You can go hang out and play ah. with the dudes. But, yeah, I just wanted to give them a shout-out as well. I mean, you brought up the gaming podcast thing. Ah. I'm probably going to hop on there and uh, and do a little jam with them as well, get a little yeah. account going totally. and a little cross-promotion and shit, man. I'll let you know. Maybe we can hop on there together and <laughs> play with them. My, uh, it's so funny. Like, I'm so, like, right now, aside from, like, the magic arena that like i started playing like that i played with you the other like we played a couple times um i do that i also i, I know it's so it's so it's so kind of i don't even know what to say like i don't know why i should be embarrassed at all but like yeah. disney has this cool like a android game that i'm addicted to oh really it's what like is a it sorcerer's uh fighting game kind of thing yeah that like i play you know and i and i get all excited about that and i like and, you know it's one of those kind of like one of those free games. You don't have to spend money, but if you do spend money, you get more crap, I guess. Yeah. But I don't really play. spend money. I, I just play. And, like, you know, you get all these cool characters from all different, like, Disney movies. Like, I, like, my, like, and you have, like, your fighting teams. Like, my fighting team is retarded. Like, I have Hades. <laughs> I have, I have, uh, uh, I have Buzz Lightyear. I have, uh, uh, 
I have the chick from uh, Aladdin. I have a uh, what's her name? Uh, oh Christ, I can't remember her name. Uh, the Princess Jasmine. Yeah, Jasmine. I have Jasmine, and she's cool because she like summons like her tiger to fight with her and stuff. So I have oh, that, nice. and then I have um, I have the guy. Now this is weird. I actually worked on this one because I fell in love with it the moment I saw it. But it, in the in which is goes into like the newest piece I did recently, which I did a stitch piece. But they have the the, the guy Gantu, who's like the big patrol guy from the you know of space from Lilo and Stitch. Yes, he's like this giant. You know, he looks like a giant like shark monster with like elephant feet or whatever. Yeah. But he's like insane in the game. And I was like, I I, I like I said I gotta have this character, so I like made sure I had this guy. So that's the kind of goofiness that I play. And that's one of those deals where you fight guys. The only thing that sucks about that game is I feel like they don't patrol enough of hacking going on because I'm sure there's some hacking going oh, on in yeah. the game because occasionally you'll sit there and play a person and you're like how did the, how did their Mickey kick the crap out of my whole team? Or it yeah. sounds so weird, but it's like it's one of those realities that like as I'm playing, I'm like, oh, that's so annoying. But those are the kind of things I you know because right now my life is like a Groundhog's Day. I I yeah. literally every this is like the most coolest breakup of reality that I've had because <laughs> usually my week is the same. Every Monday usually uh, I'm gaming with my buddies. We do like D and D. We're playing like Starfinder right now. This uh, oh, this, nice. this campaign. So like I'm we play that me and my girl Serenity and my buddy George and. and and Ralph, I guess, and uh, and we uh, we play that each week for like four or five hours, and then me and my girl will like you know we'll either do some work or we'll re relax and chill out, and then Tuesday through Thursday every day I am drawing commissions nonstop. I literally wake up, I draw until stuff is done, and that is nonstop working. Now Serenity is in the office, which in my house in the lower level uh, is is her office or her dungeon, she likes to call it, yeah. and she basically is packing stuff up because she has like <laughs> she sends out about 40 to 60 packages a week because we have constant between the show stuff and online orders and things like that it's a full-time job so she's doing that i do this we don't even see each other like we wake up and then we separate like it's like you know it's like the it's like this it's like the dog and the coyote going hey dave or we punch in and we go walk away we do our thing we come back <laughs> so there's that and then friday now we have our show and that's my thing it's like we get yeah. up and I, I get that all set up and my show is like if anyone watches the videos i literally take like I make like kind of a big display of my backdrop of just all metal and I have like I have like my lights set up to do like the LED lighting going on and uh and it's pretty much you know my girl's just I don't have the cameras like you got I just cause she's yeah. just using her phone basically with Facebook yeah but but that's our thing and we've been doing it this way like I said for 16 weeks and then Saturday is my crash day sometimes we'll do some drawing sometimes we we'll do some other stuff Sunday same deal I do a little more crashing a little more relaxing because I nice. I realize that's the funniest thing is like when you're doing like and, and, it, and I'm sure you you can appreciate this from production end of things yeah I never had off Friday Saturday I never had off a Saturday and Sunday ever. No, why would you and have when that you're off? Doing, That's show days. And when you're doing like the conventions, yeah. same deal. Oh yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sometimes Thursdays That's when we're too. Loading in, right? Usually it's like I load it's gotta in. Gotta go Monday. So well, I usually load in on th like most shows. I load in on Thursday and Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All days are shows. Yeah. Or sometimes if it's a four day show, I load in on Wednesday. But the point is, is that. I never had off a Friday or Saturday or a Sunday in forever. And now yeah. we kind of like, we're like, it just works for us to try and take Saturday and Sunday off for ourselves because we need to regroup. And the fact is, is I'm always working on pieces and thinking about what I'm going to do and getting research and go, but to sit down and do the actual work, I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to burn myself out. And that's the deal. And right now, because of all the commissions I have, that's my priority. I still sneak in a piece for myself. And I feel like what that's kind of, a, in a way, I like doing that because it keeps me fresh. It keeps yeah. me going like, oh, I feel like drawing uh, Lilo and Stitch today. But, uh, <laughs> and I'll do that, you know. I think that was on your uh, yeah, Facebook, it's, wasn't it? Yeah, it's one of the new I'll ones. Pull it up. Yeah, it's one of the new ones we just yeah, there did. It is. Yeah. So, you know, so that piece I did. And then it's funny because, like, sir, you know, that's how good my girl is. She'll, like, tease it to the to the group and, just, like, show them a piece and be like, you might you might know what this is. And there were people that are so good that they just can tell by, like, a, a scrap of Lilo's, like, shirt that what it is. <laughs> that's how the good those people are. They're, they're like, uncanny. Humans so. are crazy, man. So yeah, so we, so we, you know, so and what I did is I, I, uh, I gave the people on my show the chance to get the number one. So that's like kind of a special deal. Yeah. And, we, and of course, yeah, it went. It, you know, we sold I think like five or six of them just on Friday alone. But I mean, it's you know, people were jumping all over them, and that's kind of something that we've been. You know, we just keep trying to figure out cool things to do during my my live broadcast that gets people interested. We have a thing called the Tubes of Chance that we do, yeah. which is like because my paper prints, I still have all my paper stuff. So what we figured would be fun is is that for I I let people on the show uh, for thirty bucks, they get 
three paper prints randomly that we'll choose of the genre of their choice or if they want to go crazy and just tell us wild card she'll pick stuff from like anything and you know if there's a like i have some people that be like i i don't like any horror stuff could we just not give me any horror stuff and i'm like fine yeah. fine that's cool but what i also have occasionally is some of my pieces are like i have some limited edition paper prints that i have and sometimes she'll sneak those in there and stuff so uh, she, she has fun right. and and people have been loving it because i always say like it's 30 bucks it's not that big a deal if you didn't get one piece you didn't like you could gift it to somebody or something like that metals i don't really feel that like comfortable doing that because yeah. i always feel like it's a little more money you're laying out and i feel like if somebody got like i spent like 150 bucks on these like medals of chance and well i don't play that game i think <laughs> yeah. people go for what they want but i do give discounts like on like multiples and stuff like i, I was doing like if you buy three of my large medals i would do like 120 shipped and people could just pick which three they want or i was doing uh comic size medals three for 60 shit and we would dip those off and people could get on those and uh every week i do another thing that's special is i try to do like a four panel medal that people can buy uh, which it's just, it's those are pretty amazing because it's like it's like this piece yeah. like would be made out of like four pieces of metal to make one big one, oh. and so those are like one of a kind. It's that's like awesome. so it's 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 one piece of art. It's one giant piece. That's cool. Uh, I like those. And we did uh, last week. We did a really cool one because it was my uh, I did a piece. Of, I have a piece that's uh, a whole helmet series. Mm -hmm. That's my Boba Fett, uh, and it was it was Boba Fett with the Bespin dinner scene. So you see like uh, Han and Chewie with Leia like shooting at Vader kind of in the reflection of the helmet. Oh. Okay. But when you blew that up, it's yeah. so noticeable because you see their faces now closer and stuff like that. Like, whereas, yeah. whereas opposed to like when it's just 11 by 17, you could see it, but it's not as noticeable. Yeah. But like when I blew it up to like 22 by like 34, people were like, oh, I can see their faces and stuff. You actually did a good job on the details and stuff, which is amazing. Like when you're blowing stuff up, it's like, oh, I actually did okay on that. I was like happy. That's cool. You know, so yeah, so we I do all that. There's out. so many things. We have a lot of fun. This week we're going to do like a Gen Con special because, uh -huh. again, I, I, I tip my head in the, the, the sad miss of. Of Gen Con, one of my favorite shows of the year. But Gen Con, uh, it would have they're doing a live. A lot of these shows are doing these virtual shows throughout the weekends where they would have happened, kind of thing. Yeah. I can't say bad, good, or otherwise, but I really don't make many sales on that reality because, like, there may be cool events for the people that would have gone to go, but it's very rare for them to, unless I was a sponsor, which yeah, oh yeah, I'll lay out a hundred grand for you guys to you know, stick my name on every email you do, but it's not going to happen like that. <laughs> so, you know, so for the most part, you know, a lot of times there's no, like even San Diego Comic-Con was last weekend they had, and they, they had a vendor room. Nobody went. It was like, you know, yeah. unless you had like some special, and even the specials, like I heard people saying like the unique things that usually like different people would bring for San Diego Comic-Con was a little lacking because guess what? They didn't even know if there was going to be a show, so they probably didn't go crazy on, on whatever they had. So, But for us, we're very lucky that we have what we have going on. You know, obviously like for I wasn't at San Diego Comic-Con, uh, but, uh, but my, my fans were in my room Friday night, you know, buying for me. So that's what mattered, you know, but uh, it's tough, you know. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt, man, you know, to get out there and keep everything going. And like you were saying, you know, it's uh, just keeping your uh, world focused, keeping your week scheduled and, like, just staying on track with things, man. That's a whole game that you got to be playing, well, too. Well, how about you? I mean, you're doing all the, you're doing this, this, this beautiful podcast thing going on here. you got the whole oh, yeah. show going and all that kind of thing. So I'm sure your, your reality's changed probably a little bit, obviously a lot of bit, because now you're planning this, I would guess. Oh, and yeah. So since Big you're time. spending time planning this, you obviously have – at least you're able to put your love into it now because you don't have to be, you know, pushing a road case somewhere or, or doing sound for a band that, you you know, while you're trying to think of how you really want to be doing what you're doing, which is this, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Like, I get it. And that's a, kind of the reality for me. Like, I think back like seven years ago, uh, you know, when I was kind of pulling away from the production industry for myself to do this and going, okay, I'm actually going to give up my guaranteed income. Yeah. Give up my guaranteed gigs, give up my day rate that I could, you know, without hesitation, people were chasing and I was booked solid and, and, and take a chance on my, my dream of drawing that I hope people will buy. I lucked out. A lot of people liked what I did and because I came in with some unique ideas, like with the metal and doing stuff, you know, the way I do I it, the metal. you know, it, it's amazing that I was able to kind of make that work. And I give a shout out to my, my metal guy, you know, fairy metal, they, they take care of me. They've been with me from the beginning. We like, I actually, like I said, I worked with them. I helped them out to even go to the large metal. So, cause I love the process so much and still with them and they're doing great too. The thing that's interesting is it's funny. Cause like I talked to them and I talked to like my paper printer and, and what I find is, is that the industry is booming for those companies because right now everybody's doing, you know, if you're home, 
and you're a comic book collector, yeah. What do you do? I'm gonna fuck up my comic book collection. I'm gonna get it all up to snuff. I'm gonna go after those, go after those, uh, those pieces that I was trying to collect, or or buy those things that are, you know. So so those companies and those ends of the of the world are doing great now. Um, like even myself, I like I said, you're sitting in your house for like four months. How do you not notice a piece of art you hung on your wall like at some point? And, yeah. and that's where it comes into play where suddenly it's go, oh, shit, I love that guy's art. Maybe I could get some more of it. And so I start getting people that come out of the woodworks and start buying from me. It's, it's, it's there. You just have to know how to tap into it. Yeah. Big time, man. Well, now you got this, too. I'm sure you're going to get people that are going to come and listen to your podcast. Like, even if they were, because you've got people that are like, well, I've watched everything on Netflix. Yeah. I've watched everything on, you know, I, I, let me listen to my friend Jason or see what, you know, see what cool stuff he's up to because I got time. Well, <laughs> there's like a community out there of people that are interested in like the underground kind of podcast like this where it's like new people or like, you know, it's not just Joe Rogan, sure. you know, or Mark Marin, uh, right? Like it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they, they're one, they want to see what more of the eclectic things are. And so thankfully there's people out there that are hunting down little podcasts and stuff like that and, and jumping on board and, uh, yeah. hopefully they share it with their friends and, you know, we start to grow a little bit, yeah. but I mean, the amount of growth that we've had already is fantastic. And I'm just, I'm really enjoying the you, process. Man. We've been really getting in touch with our, like, you know, ourselves, man, we're not, so scrambled like you know where we're working these crazy hours yep. and it's like it's like morning shifts night shifts fucking midday it doesn't matter you know it's like yeah. whenever the show is that's your schedule fucking deal with it and your body just goes all over the place and so we've been really like honing in like getting up at six yep. going to bed at nine and uh eating vegetarian uh, most of the oh, time oh wait whoa, whoa yeah i won't play that game but I, <laughs> no, no, i'm a meat eater man i cannot i, I yeah. have to hold on like i know i've gained weight over the years especially now that i like like i said my I, you know, especially, and that's another thing, like, me and my girl, like, oh, we got to do something to exercise or something, because, like, we, we're so used to, like, you know, usually with exercise, our shows, man. we push the gear in, and that's usually kind of like our workout, because nothing like lugging, like, an entire booth worth of gear across a convention center in That'll hot do it. summer, you know, pushing it across the gravel, pushing it across, you know, and you're pushing, luckily, I'm smart enough to put everything on wheels, that's a production under me, it's like, everything goes on wheels, we're not lugging anything, <laughs> you know, but, but even that, you know, there's still a job, and my girl would push everything across and I would unload the truck and then we'd get it all going, you know? And so now since we don't have that as much, and then yes, my girl like has to lug, you know, our, our house has like a multi-level. So she's got to climb up and down the stairs with like the packages and things to get out the door, I guess, but not the same. So she's yeah. been actually been really good. I give her props. She's been doing like walking and stuff. She goes, we actually, there's a nice new park. They just built around the block from us, which is really nice. It's like, a, a, you know, obviously it's part of the whole developers that have been developing the whole area by me. Like they're building and it's crazy. It's like that. Like I, you saw my house. Yeah. There's like this cul-de-sac and we were like the new houses. And now to the right of us, there are like all these new houses that are almost done. And there was nothing Feel there. Fast. They were fast. It's crazy fast. Was there even so, anything there? I think there was. When I moved in, there was nothing. There was, um, when I came over to play some D&D &D with you, there was uh, a it's just foundation, I think. That was yeah. it. And now it's all done. It's and all it's, houses They are now, literally huh? to the point of they're just finishing up the, uh, they're just finishing up like the, the roofs. Yeah. And doing like the, the, the tile on the roofs and they're doing the paintings all done and there's like a couple there's only like two of them that have like some scaffolding still around to do some like trim work I guess and it's all done and it's like oh my god it's amazing and it's like they built like an entire like bolt like it's like it's like 40 houses like whoop, done and like I'm just like <laughs> and we've watched it we've been like and I and I get to wake up to it every day because like they're like right outside clamming bam bam and whatever but you know it's the point is, is like it's amazing that all this is happening and I still love the fact like I love my house I'm, I love my house I feel like I monkey pawed myself by saying I want to spend time in my house and now suddenly yeah. I'm here for four months and it's like oh shit uh, I need to get out of my house <laughs> but, <laughs> dude yeah we we finally like we, we took some trips out because so we've been focusing on uh, exercise as well and we're actually creating these uh, this yoga video thing that we're trying to put together oh, cool. where it's more of a peaceful kind of experience uh -huh. uh, as opposed to like um, like I, I do the P90X yoga for example right like I'm a big fan of the P90X workouts but the whole time Tony Horton's like fucking you know do this and this is how you tighten your legs and make sure they're a little more straight and like get your shoulders up and all these you know he's encouraging you to do the postures right yeah 
Uh, and I'm just like, man, uh, I'd rather just have some chill yoga with some like nice sounds. Calm, <laughs> like, hey, just go, <laughs> let's go into crescent pose now. Yeah, that's it. Don't no, don't say a bunch of other shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, you know, inhale up to crescent pose. Uh, oh. Right on. Well. So it's gonna be nice chill shit like that. We got 4K cameras. We got uh, all kinds of like, we got a mechanized carbon slider. All these stabilization things. So it's gonna look really sexy. Uh, and we're cool. We got um a solar powered battery and a and a nice like we've already had a camping setup but we're going out into the woods and oh, up into shoot. the mountains and we're shooting all these so you're really gonna be out there yeah we're shooting all these really videos gonna... out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> i got this hip i got this hippie wardrobe from etsy is that the way you want to be found when the uh, bears get you or something when like the that? bears get me yeah exactly <laughs> like he was in he was in he was in he was in crescent pose and then he like, he was in, he was like done <laughs> So, yeah, well, we thought we'd share some of that stuff. It was praying mantis they doing. ripped his head off in the field there and they yeah. got it on camera. I don't know if you, I, I, no, I'm just messing with you. That's, oh, yeah, no. That's cool, though. It's I just, like, 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 you know, I just visualize like, like Jason Raiden running on him. Like, Dude, we, you know, we went to Arizona to do some test footage and, uh, and we, it was very beautiful where we went. A photographer friend of ours um, invited us out to one of his, his spots, but it ended up being like 25 miles deep into the woods oh no on the side of like a cliff so it was fucking beautiful yeah but we were 25 miles deep you know like i mean it's yeah there's bears and there's uh, yeah. fucking mountain lions and it was like one of the times we didn't bring like a sidearm or something with us either because we were just like <laughs> oh we're just going to take pictures or whatever yeah. you know it's not like a real camping trip yeah. it was a real camping trip oh, we, wow. were, we were like oh fuck Thankfully, there was a full moon. Wow. So, like, you know, they weren't the, you know, the the nocturnal, like, hunters and shit. Like, the cats weren't fucking around because you can, it's easy to see them in the full moon kind of thing. They wow. kind of keeps them away. But if it was dark out, man, that would have been really, you know, if it was really, really dark, like, it's, yeah. The best would, I got, like, I, I just, that just reminded me, like, when I was younger, I was doing, like, uh, I was doing freelance lighting designs for companies around, like, you know, the East Coast where I lived. And uh, this one company that they hired me out, it was just a couple, like, my friend was the technical director, so he kind of, like, fastballed me in there. He's like, oh, you nice. come to this show. It'd be cool. I was like, all right, yeah. And uh, But it was like they gave me, like, a house to stay in. It was like a, it was like a guest house. But it was out in the friggin' middle of nowhere. Like, I had to be dropped off. Like, I didn't have a car even. Like, they kind of just dropped me off and picked me up each day. Yeah. But I'm there out in this wooded area in this night. It's a, it was a cute little cottage house, but I was like... Like my mind doesn't think Kulo Kaj house. My my mind thinks, oh shit, it's dark, and I like I, every window is like not covered kind of thing because they <laughs> want everyone to look at the beauty of the woods. And all I keep thinking is of like turning around and there'd be like Jason standing there with an axe ready to come <laughs> get me or something at any point. So that's why I, I didn't sleep very well that the, during that show. But it was like well, you know, yeah. so that's the kind of reality that I was used to. But you know, I would just sit there online talking to friends, going, "Talk to me, I don't want to be alone." <laughs> so I was alone in this house all by myself. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Right? From the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah, you got to be careful out there. I always, uh, I always feel better whenever someone's fucking strapped, or you know, we got some kind of, some kind of way to protect ourselves from the insane shit that's out in nature. Because you never know. Well, it's it's, it's pop getting up. more insane, man. Yeah. This whole freaking country's going nuts. Yeah. But yeah, you know, and that's the deal. Like we, we, you know, you know, we drive so many places on, you know, all over this country in our in our vehicle and stuff. And you know, once in a while we'd get down certain roads where you're late at night just trying to get somewhere, and you'd be like, where the hell am I? You know, yeah. and, and as a joke. We'd be like, let's shut the lights off, see what's because you're the only person on the highway. There's nobody there. It's like a yeah. two. Usually we get on some of these two lane highways of Idaho or something. It depends where we're trying to get to, and it's just like there's nothing. You know, once in a while, one one time I feel bad because my girl is like, she's always she's a big animal lover. I'm a big animal lover. We're like driving down a road and there's nothing but giant rabbits running across the road. <laughs> so you'd be like, you know, and you couldn't do not. Yeah, you'd hear like a thud like every thirty seconds and be like, no buddies, oh you know, God. because they'd just be running in front of you. You couldn't do nothing about it they skid out from across and it'd be like whole like herds of them or something it's good for the population oh it's nuts it's man give the scavengers just, like, something to eat way out there so <laughs> yeah <laughs> weird shit right i don't know so but Traveling yeah cross country is a bizarre thing man you but know, we you... miss it now now we yeah. miss it because that's what we love to do i mean sur that was the reality where we'd be on the road that was our deal we'd, we'd we'd do our show we'd finish on sunday break down everything get it in the truck and depending on where we had to be the next show we'd either 
leave Monday or leave Tuesday. Like if it was if it was not that far away, we'd crash an extra day to kind of recoup ourselves. And maybe some places we had these restaurants we'd love to eat at. Like there's steakhouses that have probably like you know that I've that I've tasted their steak. And I'm a big uh, creme brulee fan too. That's like my thing. Whenever we go somewhere, it's like, do you have a creme brulee? That's my thing. <laughs> but um. But we'd go all over the country to these places that we love, like Indiana and stuff like that. And we'd do these shows and we'd try and do that. Or we'd just hoof it and get on the road. And, yeah, we'd hit it. You know, we learned pretty fast not to do um, – try to drive more than 12 hours in a day if we could avoid it. So if we could do, like, 8 to 10 hours in a day, get somewhere, crash, go to the next place, you know. And that was kind of what would work for us to get from point A to point B. And That's Serenity smart. would – work really hard on our schedule to pick shows that were not so far apart because that's the amazing thing that's crazy you think about comic-con yeah but yet we would do a show say like in indiana and then there'd be a show a week later that was just as big in maybe like texas or or kentucky or something like that that is not even that far a drive away but because of the community and the way the locals want to do the show as opposed to traveling or whatever, it would be like a whole just as another big show with new people that we wouldn't even see. That would be only eight hours away. And we'd be like, whoa, okay, we go here and do this, do this, do this, this. And sometimes we could keep that up. Sometimes we're, out, we're on the road for as much as sometimes three months straight. Wow. Yes. It was nuts. So yeah, so you guys, uh, you guys just crashing in hotels. You got some kind of like bed situation or the we, trailer. I'm a spoiled brat. I will pay for a hotel yeah. because I, 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 not only, not only. Look, there's people I know that sleep in their cars. There's yeah. people I know that set up like a bunk in their their van and try and lay down in there. And I, I too many stories of somebody getting jacked in a parking lot of yeah. Walmart or or even just your health. I mean, it's not healthy to be laying in a vehicle that's got no air conditioning unless you're going to leave your vehicle running all night or something like that yeah so no i i i actually you know we stay at like i do ihg usually in between and they're not super duper great but they're also good quality you know it's like in between yeah. it's a i'd say it's a good quality you know holiday and express type stuff so we do those and we'd rack up points for that and then basically by like when we were doing uh the show shows i would usually stay like if i could i like at a marriott because the marriott's i have i have you know i'm ambassador level with marriott now till 2023 because of their whole pushing everything forward oh, nice. so and again i do that because a we get the best routes. We get the best rates. We get taken care of. They, they, and a lot of times, uh, which I like, is they would take care of us with our vehicle because we have a big oversized vehicle yeah. that doesn't fit in a lot of garages. So sometimes the Marriotts would be nice and be like, hey, yeah, just park it right on the front. You're cool. We love you. And I would tip the guys and take care of them, and I wouldn't have to worry about my vehicle all weekend where someone would have to go pay 50 bucks a day to park in some oversized lot or something like that. So I get Dude. to save money that way. That's a big deal. It does. It all pay, and it adds up. And at this point now, like I said, it's like we're ambassador level with them. So like I could get a room anywhere I damn well want, and I call and they make room for me. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, it's but it's an expense, and yeah. it's a deal where all this when I you know like I talked about earlier is like you start spending money on things. Sometimes when I do these home shows and I make X amount of dollars, and I start taking into account that okay, I didn't make as much that I would make it say like a show, but. I didn't lay out all this money for a hotel, all this money for yeah. the driving, all this money for the, 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 the booth, you know. And then when I start saving like 10 grand and suddenly go do the math and go, I made just as good money as I would have done if I drove to that show now. I'm yeah. cool. And then, you know, and I could just do it from my couch and talk to people. I do miss the public talking to people and seeing people, though, because it is nice to be able to have a conversation with a human being instead of just screaming at my girl's camera <laughs> phone all day, you know, because that's what I end up doing. Is I, And it is. It's, she's sitting there like she literally could see all the comments going on and I don't see any of that shit yeah. like I almost need to maybe what I'll do is eventually like set up a TV so I could see what's going on and just get feed. a second laptop going man well I'm always walking I'm not I'm right? not sitting so oh, it's yeah. kind of hard to do that yeah. like I need something that's something in the big back. I would need something big in the background that I could look at and go oh, oh, oh you guys are all making fun of me or something yeah. you know because that's it she's having a ball talking and these people all having <laughs> conversations and shit while I'm just you know going and next up on QVC you know, <laughs> you know and that's what I feel like half the time but you you know, it, it, we we people get a kick out. What people love, which is always really neat, is uh, and I get a lot of comments on this. Is like when I uh, when I talk about the pieces, because I'll talk about the history of why I drew a certain thing or did a certain thing with a piece or mm. something that connected with that piece or who commissioned it or you know a lot of stuff like that. I find comes into play and people get excited because they they do they like knowing that the artist proofs that they're trying to get. They wonder what like was going through my head when I drew that piece maybe and sometimes that that really does make them you know it touches people. Yeah. 
What I was actually curious uh, when you were talking earlier about the the large pieces that are four by uh, four different pieces, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how big are you painting these actually? Like, how big is your Everything, canvas when you're actually painting? I'm, everything's drawn on my iPad. Everything's drawn on my iPad. Oh, it's on your iPad. So you can... Z- I digitally paint everything. When I you create like zoom my pieces, in and like I design my pieces. Add detail. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I design my pieces uh, starting at 11 by 17 size okay. at 300 DPI, um, which is, in artist's term, when people do printing and stuff like that, that's like the... That's the the good minute medium. Some people like to go a little higher. Like uh, for some of the book deals I do, they 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 ask for like 600 DPI maybe. Okay. But 300 DPI is, I feel is a good enough DPI for my pieces that when it gets put on uh, a file, if I go to blow it up, it's not hurting it too bad. And if yeah. I shrink it, obviously it's not going to hurt it at all. Okay. Um, but that's what I've been doing. Uh, especially so since I had the iPad Pro where I was able to mess with the file sizes a little bit better with the programs I use because usually usually with like you know with, with the originals when I was when I first started doing this I had like just a regular iPad and it just was like oh I'm drawing this and then it wouldn't even be like I couldn't determine what size it is I had to take it into Photoshop and adjust it or crop it a little to fit the right size because it was drawing it for like iPad size yeah. was, you know which is not like a normal like you know you know, and every artist is different. Like I have artists I collect from that they do these weird design sizes and stuff like that. But honestly, eleven by seventeen, eleven by fourteen, those kind of sizes are pretty standard sizes. Easy for to artists. get frames for, easy to get mats for, exactly, stuff like that. Exactly, yeah. and I've been doing it this way the same way forever. Same thing with my comics. People start asking, like, what's that size? I'm like, yeah. it's a standard comic size. Well, do you know what a standard comic size? It's like 10 and 3 quarters by 6 and 5 eighths. Yeah. Trying to explain that to a person and remember it is like, took me years to even do it at this point. Oh, yeah. I still forget it. So, like, when I start talking that numbers, yeah. it's, they get the white face, and I'm just like, just look up standard comic size. Yeah. There's, there's frames a, for it. There's a frame for that. Yeah. You know, so, the, you know, that's kind of reality. But, you know, um, but yeah, so for me, that's one of the reasons why. You know, yes, and, and back in the day when I started this, uh, there was not a lot of love. Uh, a lot of people poo pooed on like digital p- artists because they would be like, "Oh, you're just you're just doing you're just a tracer." It is, and it'd be like, no, "Everybody I'm, wants to say you're just now, doing something," and it's like, well, don't, you can simplify anything down to whatever you want to." Well, and that's the deal. And so, like for me. I I drew tradition, traditionally like yeah. when I was growing up for like you know forty years. Haters gonna technology hate. Technology did not exist like that. And when yeah. it you know and I remember it's like even as a kid I think I think think where I had like the Commodore sixty four computer like they came out with some draw pad thing that they were trying to push on people yeah. that like you put the pen down and it was like the block was like the like it was like a three by three block you would put on there and yeah. we had a return i was like this i can't draw it this is stupid but like you know technology's gotten there and obviously the ipad you know with their programs and then you know, the pencil and all that they're they're doing it specially for people yeah. like me and well, now i was I find gonna people say all day long um like probably when you started with the ipad the stylus and the the response and the way that it does the like a calligraphy thing with thickness and, and sharpness and everything. It wasn't very good in the beginning until they came out with that pin yeah. that's specifically for iPads to draw with, right? Yeah. I'm assuming you're using the I, Apple pin, right? I, well, yeah. The, or the whatever pad, it's called. The, I have the second generation. Well, because I actually got, I have two iPad, like I had the iPad Pro and then I got the newest one with the pencils, both pencils. The yeah. first one was one that you had a, a charge on its own. Okay. Where you plug it into a charge. The new one, it's even crazier. Like it just has a magnet on the side and it just sticks to the side and it charges that way. That's sort of like the Surface Pros Kinda, from yeah. Microsoft. Maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So yeah. like that works beautifully. And they also like updated the you know, and again, I'm sure they're gonna get better because that's all they do is get better. Yeah. I love it. I love it so much. It's such a for me, that's the beautiful thing, because when I'm on the road and I need to be able to create artwork. You know what's 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 more practical? Me having a, a Wacom and a and a tower, and I yeah. have to drag that around, set it up at my desk in my hotel room, and then by the time I finally get everything the way I like, the chair with the angle and the this and the that, I got ten minutes to draw because I got to be somewhere. Yeah. You know, or I pull out my iPad and go, oh, I'm gonna sit and draw and lay on the couch and draw because that's yeah. pretty much what I do. I I draw literally. I do most of my work on my like when people are like we want to see your setup. My setup's my couch. I lay on my couch. I draw. <laughs> you know? And then sometimes when I get sick of laying in a certain position, I, you know, and I do buy like, I bought like yeah. this, I bought this really cool actually, uh, it's kind of like an easily thing that has legs that you can put stuff on to like adjust the angles. Okay. It's meant for like laptops and stuff like that too. And I tried it with the thing, but I'm so used to like laying on my side. Like I, I draw like this. <laughs> that's my life, you know, which is weird, you know, but that's, that's what I do. I, I've been doing it. I'm so used to it, you yeah. know, that I just, I, that's what I do. 
you know, I was I was a kid. I was one of those kids that like even growing up that they 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 didn't like the way I held the pencil to draw to write. Yeah, like they were trying to tell you, you can't write like that. I'm like I'm doing it. Shut up. Yeah, you it's know? working. <laughs> it's working. It? Yeah, you know. Like, so that was the kind of stuff. Everybody doesn't have to fit into your box. I uh, I was I was the kid that they were always like, you're, you're you have doctor penmanship. You should be a doctor because oh, I really like I did I failed penmanship as a kid. Like I had to retake that in summer. They made me take a book home because that my penmanship was that bad. Dude, when I was like fourth or fifth grade, right? I remember specifically there. I had very good handwriting. I remember them saying, "Man, your handwriting's fantastic." Yeah. And uh, and now as like an adult, I have the absolute worst scribble garbage ass handwriting because I never write anything down, man. It's always on a tech. I could use my well, thumbs. I could text really you, fast uh, with my thumbs. Did you ever draft at all? Like, did you ever have to do drafting for like technical stuff? Or, no, no. See, like I had to do that. I was, I was, that was in college. They made us draft. Like I did hand drawn plots. Oh wow! Uh, I did hand drawn theater plots where you had to draw the prosceniums and the this and the and the battens oh, and the things. Yeah. I used to do all that shit. So no vector works. <laughs> not at the time. Vector works was actually here's the. Funny it was thing. around, but we weren't using. Well, it. here's the funny thing: the vector works was given to the tech. And people, not the designer people. Oh, okay. Because Broadway designers, a lot of Broadway designers, up until probably, I want to say recently, were drawing by hand still because it was art. Yeah. That was the deal. Now. They I, just do it in the they, computer. They just do it in the fucking computer. Yeah. But those guys were getting like the beginnings of Vectorworks and stuff like that. It wasn't in t it wasn't Vectorworks. It was just CAD. Okay. They yeah. didn't have Vectorworks then. Vectorworks popped up probably like 10 years after after yeah. I graduated and I was no longer, you know, doing any of that shit. Yeah. But I do I had to do a lot of Vectorworks drawings for like shows when I was doing, you know, as a LD and stuff and, and, and lighting director and programming. And and, uh, and occasionally I would get stuck with it. I didn't even, I refused to pay for a full Vectorworks because I was like, I would do the freebie one. But I mean, at the same time, like I did the House of Blues, they had me do the House of Blues like plot back in the day because yeah. Drew, Drew was drawing with Drew is I, I'm not gonna shit on Drew, but Drew 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 with like color like the the, we the, love the original Drew. He'd shit on anybody. He did his plot. <laughs> he did his plot in the you know that paint program you get with with Windows. Yeah, he did his plot in Paint Windows. <laughs> so that was not really to scale, <laughs> obviously. Drew. And but that was the that was the Bible of House of Blues until I came along. Yeah, what the plot was, and he would send that out of circles and X's were fucking like this light and that light, and I was like, that's hilarious. Well, maybe I should do this a little more pro. How about that, dude? And he was like, go for. <laughs> You could do it. Go yeah. for it. You know, and he's yeah, he he's caught, he he taught himself a lot of stuff along the way too. So I'm sure he's 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 done more from from that end. But that yeah. was where it started when I when I came in there. So, uh, but yeah. So uh, and I don't even know. Like I don't even know who drew the newest plot. Like because we we did the designs for it, and then and a lot of it's been just tweaked so much. I don't even know if there's a physical plot of it anymore. Right. And it seems like it's been. It seems like it's like less than half of what it used to be. The last well, time I saw a show in that at that house. Here's of the deal. Blues, they went fully. They went fully LED. Yeah, it's all LEDs so now. So a lot of those cans, which for for realistic reasons, yeah. park cans are, can be a you know or or a heat sink and a and yeah. then, and and keeping them up and dealing with the gels and all that. It's shit. a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass. So if you yeah. could get away with the same look of four park cans, you know, uh, with one light pointing in the same direction it's with an LED, you're right. It's not the same. It, there's something about looking at the truss and you see that whole, and I'm sure Drew, <laughs> that, you know, that you, monstrosity up yeah, there of yeah. like 500 lights, yeah, and you're just like, oh my god. And yeah. then you look up now, and it's like maybe 150. Yeah. Like yeah, and you're just like, yeah. oh man. And it's uh, there's some lights up there, but it. You couldn't comprehend it, right? Like it's just you know, so much to wrap your head around. You know, You're like, ah, man, it's too many lights. You know what's funny? I have it's, I it's have not set right I have not set foot in a house of blues, uh, or uh, you know, I have not I haven't gone to house of blues like since for like years. I haven't yeah. set foot in there in like five years. The last time I went there, actually, I take that back. The last time I went there was for Thomas's uh, memorial. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you know. Thomas Cassara, man. Okay. Yeah, R.I.P. Went out of nowhere. It, that was a crazy deal. That and that was, was a weird one, deal, too, because I went in there. I went in there, and I'd been out of the business for a while. And, yeah. of course, I bump into a bunch of people that they kind of did. Like, I just, you know, like, we all in production know about each other from shows or gigs or whatever we do when we work together and stuff like that. Yeah. But, like, I vanished. Like, and there were a couple people that were in the know, like my friend Olivia and uh, and then Lori and people like that, and you and I, you know, and, and and but they knew that I was doing it, 
they didn't know how I, you know because usually everyone says starving artist you know yeah you know? it's like I'm gonna go sell my art it's like oh sorry Good you know usually that's what you hear most of the time oh sorry and then they don't realize that I was actually doing like you know three times the income with yeah. my art than I was doing with production which wasn't so bad to begin with so I was doing quite fine yeah um that's but, the attitude of people that just don't have faith in themselves. It's to like hard. Go it's, out and do it. It's like, man, that's such a. It's a struggle, and it's, it's like, a, oh, no one be will ever be successful of, at this. And it's like, that's not true. I, that's not true. I feel bad though sometimes for some people that like inspired me to do this. That yeah. I see that. I hope they're doing well too. But I always feel like some of those people, I, I, you know, it's like you kind of like. Like some of them aren't doing what they want to be doing still. And then it's like, I would think I am the inspiration. Like, look at this retard here who just yeah. went out and did this and he's <laughs> doing it and he's doing it well and yeah. he's making money. And he's, you know, I, I just, I, I always try and inspire other people. Like whenever I see people that are doing, I try and cheer them on and stuff. And mm -hmm. it's, it's hard, you know, cause I feel bad for some people that won't have faith in themselves. Yeah. Um, I feel some people have too much faith in themselves, <laughs> and, 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 and they think they're doing better than they are. Yeah. You know, but it, you know, whatever. I, you know, you try your best. You try, you know. But I just, I, I know that me, my outlook has gotten so positive. At least I try to think so. I mean, I hope it you think be. so. Do you think so? You're, you think I'm yeah, pretty positive? You're a very positive guy. I try to yeah. be. I, I, I really do. I and mean, trust me, I can be the most sarcastic bastard in the yeah. world. I look at the world through like it, they're, they're all to get us kind of reality. I'm not a. I'm not like a, that kind of a like a rah rah go go person. Yeah. But I think every person, this country is so amazing where you could do anything you damn well want. I can't shit on that. How you no. shit on that? I, I, you know, that's why to me, I feel the like opportunity right in front of you. Anyone can make it. Anyone. anyone can make it. Have a cool idea and go with it and be unique. And that's yeah. another thing too. I, I see artists all day long. They always want to meet me. They always want to say, how do I do what you're doing? Do something cool. Yeah. Just don't do my stuff. Do your own thing. <laughs> don't do my stuff. Don't do me because then you're just trying yeah. to be me and then you're going to advertise me because yeah. everyone looks at your stuff. Look, I have artists that all day long. Like, I want to be like you. Like, you don't want to be like me. You want to be you. Do you. You yeah. be you. You know, it's like that whole, you ever watch a gumball cartoon? I know it's like gumball. Yeah. Song. They have the most amazing, They did, like I had a song that I wanted to like make my ringtone. You're talking about the, the blue cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They had a whole thing where there was actually, they, they did a whole show based off of it where it was based off of somebody was in another country was stealing their characters and making a fake cartoon, like their own cartoon. Oh, really? Based off of them. So what they did is they did a whole episode with those characters in their cartoon I think I actually them, saw that episode. And they, came, and they had a whole song. It was called Be Your Own You. And it was like, yeah. don't do what I do. Be your own you. And it was yeah. like hilarious. I thought, it's like, oh my God, that was like the ultimate, like, wow. Because there's times where I see like other artists like trying to copy like some of my colors now. I see yeah. some guys trying to, like the metal is a no-brainer. I, I, I know I made it popular, so there's a lot of guys that jump on it now because they want to be successful. And that's what's that going to happen, though. But that's the thing. I take it as a compliment. You have to take that. What I get angry about is when I see somebody take like one of my pieces and try and draw their, you know, do my piece. And it's like, why are you copying my friggin' piece? Why would you do that? You can draw anything in the world. There's a, there's a lot of people out there that just don't have, I guess, Confidence, I well, bet. Well, either that or they just they just know that mine sold. And that'll sell, hopefully. And Ugh. they try. And it's, you know, we Ugh. see people like that all the time. You know, that's yeah. the nature of the beast. There's, oh, and, and that's, I think, I think, and I know I'm, a, you know, there's, there's artists that I, ins that inspire me that I try to be better or, yeah. or, you know, it's one thing to use like an idea or a color or, a, or, or like a shading technique or something you learn from somebody else. Totally. It's another thing to take like the entire layout of a piece and just draw it the same exact way and be like, why that's like, cause mm. I work really hard on my poses and my layouts and stuff. And I know that nobody has done them before because I work hard for that. Yeah. When I see that, I'm always like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. We even had somebody, um, speaking of which, this is, this is a nuisance. And uh, I got a, I got a message from somebody. Uh, you know how they have like these online poster things you can get? Yeah. Like where they'll do like you could you can buy a poster from some company. And you, of course, don't know where the hell the art came from, but they sell that. Well, apparently they had some kind of like a, a thing where you could do like pointer, like pointer, you know, point, I don't know what it is, where they, they do like the little dots to make stuff or something like that like a fabric thing okay. or something like that right. like but a crochet pattern kind of like a crochet like thing but they would give you a design that you would be doing the design on top of kind of thing yeah well somebody sent me a message at one point with like my oogie boogie piece going did you give these guys permission to use your oogie boogie piece what the hell and i was like no and it's like they have like a thousand pieces so there was no way unless i went through and i did i went through yeah. all 30 pages of their shit to see if anything else of theirs was there but like you know, we sent them like a, as nice of a C and D as you can get with yeah. I'm about to take down your whole website, by the way. You have no permission for this. Yeah. And and for like, real. You know, and they did. They took it down. But 
those companies like exist for that reason where they just grab everything they can from the internet that they yeah. like and where did the other thousand can... images come from oh, somebody else and yeah. i and i know How and we you... did we sent that like a whole hey if you know something like all my artist networks something like that. i was like look for your stuff because these guys are stealing stuff yeah there's a lot of companies that just they don't care and then that's you know no offense i hate to say it too because you see i love them too but you see all these t-shirt companies too you got all these t-shirts t-shirt of the week a t-shirt of this yeah the reason why it's a week because they have a week to take it down before they basically somebody comes in and goes hey you stole my image oh wow so, i didn't I think about that yeah it's all just rip off and nobody yeah, does that's the problem is, is as an artist now i i'm my i get that prickly like porcupine feel and all this yeah. shit that i never even thought about you know, even just dumb shit. Like when you have friends, like I have friends that like to take pictures and put them in their profiles and stuff like that. And it's like, did you credit the artist? Did you even credit the artist that you're throwing up this favorite art piece that you love? And it's like, yeah. you know, and I get it if it's Jim Lee and shit like that. Everyone knows Jim Lee, but and what if it's somebody else's? What if it's not? You don't know. And it's so many dumb things that you think about. And of course, yes. What are you going to do? You're going to be like a jerk and go like, you need to go credit that person. No, you just you yeah. just think about it and move on. And, yeah. You know, but there's a lot of that. A lot of people do. You know, if, 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 I have I have people that'll take my stuff. And they'll put it as their Facebook like screen thing, and I love it though because it's funny. Because when I see people like liking my stuff with my own piece, I'm like, yeah. it's kind of weird. It's like, like, oh shit, that's my stuff. That's nice. You know, they're using it as their like Facebook profile or something. Yeah. Well, you're out into the 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 zeitgeist or whatever now. You're <laughs> you're you're affecting you're affecting the world, dude. It's 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 gotten bigger than you. The other day, <laughs> I got the most weirdest compliment ever from my mother. Um, she said, "I googled you." You have, you're everywhere. Like yeah. she said, it's not just like little stuff. You like, I Google your name and there's things like interviews, there's stuff. And I was like, she's like, you are on the internet. I'm like, I guess I am. I'm yeah. somebody now. My mom could find me. <laughs> I had to do that to myself, right? Like yeah. um, when I started doing all this corporate shit, I had to, I Google myself Yeah. and I go, man, let's get all this crap off the internet, right? <laughs> oh, <my>. like, <laughs> all this crazy Here's a picture bullshit. of Jason flipping off the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put a, I put a, I, I made sure that if you, when you look me up it's like a nice picture of me where i just got my hair cut right really like, i mean that's still oh, yeah. you though i mean it's, you can, yeah but i got all like all the fucking you could be like all the you insane just like, gross shit that was on my well, facebook yeah, page so you gotta watch stuff, out man that shit comes and like all that stuff i just got of, rid of it so think, it, of, think of like you know yeah. what's his name who did the guardians of the galaxy man one joke from freaking where we almost got you fired from a you know disney and all that stuff oh yeah and well of course, the, yeah they rehired him but i mean yeah i mean not everyone gets off that way when they find this stuff about you. And of course, this is the well, this is the generation of that culture, man. Yeah, this like, is the generation of cancel culture. Get rid yeah. of this person. Let me dig back and find. I don't yeah. like that one thing he said, so I'm gonna scroll through his entire fucking life uh, and find this, you know, anything I, I can it's to, so to hard, belittle man. them. I feel bad. Like, and I don't talk politics or anything like that on my page, right? Because yeah. not, not for nothing, but as an artist. I, I, maybe just as a businessman, I learned pretty fast. Is like I don't care what nobody's gonna care as much of what I think yeah. as much of what I they don't agree with what I think. Yeah. So why give somebody ammunition? That's all it is to just hate me. Because I got friends that are artists. They're like I won't I won't do shows in red states. I won't do shows in That's liberal absurd. states. And I'm like, so you just cut off half your income. Half. That's not literally. too smart. The country's so divided like, right now on that, well, too. Yeah, you're, it's but, literally 50% at this point. But I even said to them, like, so you're going to go to a Comic-Con that probably has all of the people that follow your beliefs yeah. there, and you're snubbing them because they are in a state that they may not have won the vote for that that they may not, you know, something that I yeah, like. The explain state this doesn't to me. represent. Like we're in a yeah. we're in a democratic yeah. state. I'd say I'm I'm way more of a conservative than a than a, than a liberal at this point well, in my life. The, well, I, yeah, you know, I feel the like, state doesn't represent the people in the state. Right, opinion I mean, of you things. have to have open minds. I and, and I honestly just feel like sometimes it's harder for. I think too many people are just willing to just throw away friendships and things off of disagreeing with stuff these days. Yeah, those like, people are shit, and they can they can walk away, and I'm glad to see them go. I don't do that to anybody. My t I'm probably one of the few people you can scroll through my timeline. You'll just be like, Jesus, the world is so full of hate because it's like because uh, I don't I don't kick anybody off, right? Yeah, and especially yeah. if they're blasting crazy views, I'm, I'm really interested in their bullshit. But you go down, scroll, 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 and it's just hate, 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 and uh, people. 
promoting whatever side they're on of the political party and then all the trolls come in and, and just just tear apart any view you could ever possibly have because it doesn't match their view and on either side they just go back and just tear each other apart and it's yeah. just it's it's very ugly it's very ugly to see people so out of their minds it's and social rage i think what it is i think honestly i think what it is is social media uh you know has has promoted the 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 armchair warrior to the nth degree where yeah. you can you could pretty much scream into the wind everything at people and you hit people with these things or you attack people's beliefs or or what they don't believe or you, it, it, i feel like everybody wants to get that one dig and it's like that south park like episode yeah. of the guy who's like just waiting to get everybody angry and he's all <laughs> i i just like <laughs> you know it is. it is what it is and i feel like instead you know i i i've I feel like I've tried to just bring more positive to my stuff. I don't post a lot on my personal page. Like, you're friends with me yeah. on Facebook. I don't post a lot myself. Yeah. Where I will post, and you're actually, you've actually seen this, I'm yeah. sure. And this is my, this is my one, I'm going to give my one rant of griping, okay? I'm going to do this gripe. now. Here's my gripe. This is my gripe for all my Facebook friends out there that I've known from decades, is that as an artist in a world where right now the only way I make a living is by promoting my stuff on my little weekly show, if you, if you, you know, I have so many friends that are in the arts. I have so many friends that are in the production industry, the entertainment industry, that are crying that, oh, whoa, is the artists? They're all suffering. They're all yeah. suffering. And then I go and post, hey, I'm doing my show this week. Can you like or show that you're kind of interested in going to my little show there? And you don't even have to go. You don't have to buy anything. You just have to click interested. Because if you yeah. click interested and you've got a thousand friends that I don't know, your friends now see that you're interested in my stupid show. So doing that helps me and I have friends that I've been friends with for decades that to this day will like the post I make saying hey come like my shit but not yeah. like the goddamn event yeah and uh I, I I you know it's to the point where I don't even know how to fix that I like I try my best to say guys you love me right do you love you really want to be my friend help me out here and they don't do it and then I've had friends go oh dude I missed it and they're like they're looking at last week's post and I'm like no that's last week's, dude. Just yeah. like the event. Yeah. You don't have to go. Click interested or Just going. Just click interested or going. It's all it does because everybody in your feed, and this is something to, I think, I, this is my this is my commercial to all artists out there that are trying to do special events. Yeah. And, and for all you friends out there that want to support your friends but don't want to buy their shit. Because <laughs> there's a lot of them, I get it. Not you don't have to buy their shit. Don't buy. Subscribe. I've, I've, I like, got share. Just, just that's all you need to do is just you clicking, liking. Any of that dumb shit on social media is like God now because you are helping make other people see my stuff. Because there's a time, there's a reality on the way the internet works, yeah. Especially on social media, that it's all about the likes. The more likes you have, the more the more social, the most the more reach you get. And mm -hmm. you may not want to buy something or can't buy something. And I know I get it. I have friends all day. Or I can't afford it. I'm sorry. I can't afford it. Don't buy anything. Just like my shit, please. Yeah. Just send a like. Just share it. You can share it on your page. You may have three friends that I don't know. I don't care if you only have two friends on your fa fucking Facebook page. If you share it and one of those fucking friends buys a bookmark from me, you made me money. Yeah. You saved my life. Thank you. Thank right. You. And like, I feel man. like I get in these arguments with these people. And then what? And then the then the coup de grace is they come up and they post something like, "Come like my new page," and I'm yeah. like, "Fuck you." You. <laughs> Why would I like your shit when you haven't s even liked one of my fucking posts in five years? Yeah, and they do it too. It's like goes without it goes without saying. Like because right now, all these production people that are looking to like trying start, to stream live concerts, I'm selling knitting supplies, or I'm doing this, or like or I'm doing. I've gone to doing like 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 you know like. Yeah. And I and I look at these guys. I'm like, yeah, where were you when when I needed you? And yeah. I'm still here. And they still don't do it. I'm like, I give you a like for a like if you even wanted to play that game, but you don't want to help me. Yeah. And, and, and so I've actually I, I've actually threatened a few people that I'm just taking out of the feed. I'm cutting you yeah. out because I, I <laughs> like at this point, what's the point? If I known you since kindergarten, I don't talk to you anywhere. Yeah, you're in my feed for what? What are you there for? Just to yeah. fucking just to just to weigh down Facebook for me? I mean, I have no idea. So I yeah. I think I kicked kicked out about a hundred people out of my feed like in the last couple months just because as a business person I'm like this isn't really doing anything. What I find yeah. it's interesting though is I've gained I gained a lot of fans that have come into my personal feed yeah. where I used to not really want to do that, and I started thinking about it, and I was like. I'm not gonna hide. I'm not like doing anything amazing. Yeah. You know, and if anything, I feel like at least those people are supporting me still because I do. They I have I have some really cool fans. I swear to God. I have some guys that'll share every post I do. 
they have they they'll share the, they they share the when they get my art in the mail and it's thankful i just i just i just trying to like i said just kind of keep the positive going and and unfortunately I, you know there's nothing more annoying than somebody like nobody done like the world's shit i hate that nobody supports anybody and it's like yeah. that same asshole can't support me what are you doing it's like yeah. you got time to bitch on facebook but you can't click like <laughs> and that's you know that's what we're, i'm trying to do with uh with my homies uh let me let me give them a shout out again since we're talking about sure. it over at fucking teamrunk.com, man. My buddy's doing their video game podcast. He's like my best friend since awesome. freaking, uh, I've known, I've known Ray since I was 10 years old, fifth grade. Yep. You know, and so, you know, we're, we're sharing each other's stuff. If I post something, they share it. If they post something, I share it. And you got to help I promote it, like it on I've, my show. I've, I've Go check along, out teamrunk.com, everybody. You know, I've made it a point to like your posts when you do them. Yeah. Um, I make it a point to like, like when my friends do it, I try and support them, give them something because it's, 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 it's something. Yeah, you know, you got to do something. I, it's hard, and I get well, that's it. how we all grow. Exactly. We all can grow and make money, yeah. right? And we can all like have this great thing together, or we can all just be shitty people <laughs> and not help each other and not ra- lift each other up. And then everybody loses, right? And it's like everybody wins or everybody loses, man. There's no middle ground here where you get to just sit on the sidelines and not participate and not help and, and support your friends. It's, and yeah. then everyone still gets to gets what they want, man. Yeah. It's like no, nah, man. It takes every single individual person. Clicking those buttons and really supporting it's us. It's not even that hard. You're sitting there surfing no, your not. phone half the time anyway. Most of these people are on Facebook. Yeah. If you're on Facebook starting arguments and screaming about things, you can, and then you my can little my picture scrolls quick. up, you could just click like in the, in the process of in, in between your, your fight about, like, yeah. you know, you know, gun control or whatever the hell you, you know what I mean? It's like everyone's got their thing and it's like, you guys have time to scream about this shit and you can't just like my thing. Yeah. All right, whatever. You know, and, I, and it's, it's also funny because, like, I, I think on. Like when you have a page, right? You you have people that follow you and like you. Yeah. Now, like I have a lot of people on my page. I have like eighty over eighty thousand people. Um, but you see who likes and and follows you. But there's there's like weird, I have weird numbers of people that follow me but don't like me. Yeah. What is that? They're not on a lot. But they like. But they. But they. But, but wait, they follow me, but won't like my page. Oh 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 oh! I see what you're saying. You know, and you know what that is. That's haters. They want to see what the hell you're doing and keep tabs on you, but they don't want to give you the like. I guess so. There's so many people out there like that, too. Isn't that weird? I get that, too. It's a trip, like, I have, like, and it's funny because I have, have like, 60 of those that apparently are all following me but not liking me, and the rest of them are all liked and followed. I I don't understand how that works, but you have to really work hard to do that. I think you have to go out of your way to, to, you know what I mean? So that's weird. I, I, I don't know why people would do that, but... I understand liking and not following well, because yeah, because then you're just supporting. You like support and you don't, them, but I don't want to see them. I see your shit, but I'll, but I'll, I'll support throw you. But the other way, yeah, right? that's weird. Isn't that weird? That's that is weird. haters, huh? That's a, that's a hater thing. I that's think that's interesting, right? People are a trip, man. It's like you got nothing better to do than go around and hate people that were in your life for half a second, and it's like there's a focus on yourself, man. Why don't you, you know, like there's take an care artist of yourself, that, uh, love yourself instead of hating someone else. There's an artist that that, that I that I that I been friends with at a lot of the shows he's another one of those uh guys that's been doing it for a long time um i'll go throw him i'll throw him a shout out even terry huddleston yeah he, he does a lot of good you know he's like he's known for like a lot of those face shots where he does his great face shots of characters that you'll see at the shows and stuff like that and uh again he's one of those guys that's like hey you're doing it right if you got haters and I'm yeah like, okay i guess i got it. i'm doing it right i got haters because I, I know I got haters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people don't want to see you live in your, uh, what was it? I saw a thing, hashtag best life, <laughs> right? Uh, they don't want to see that shit, man. They want yeah. to see you down. They want just as long as as your life's just a little bit worse than theirs, they can support you and they're into it because, you know, they're looking down on you coming up. But if you're above them going, hey, I need a little, you know, you're doing better than they are in their eyes. Not saying that anybody is doing better than I do anybody feel else, like, right? And they, I did feel like that they, maybe was part of what, like, Facebook started like in a way when everyone was yeah. grabbing all their high school friends to just say, if I'm, am I living better than this person? Oh, yeah. A little bit? Maybe there was some of that, I guess, and that's why people clung to each other immediately to see what, oh, that guy's like a doctor. That guy's like rich. That guy's, this guy's living in a trailer park. Awesome. I'll watch him forever. And so yeah. You know, and so like I guess that kind of reality maybe kicked in, but now I just I don't know. I just I just especially like when you're when you're friends with people that are in the same kind of uh, uh, industry that's hurting, you would think there'd be more of that. Especially when I do see those people like you know, like I said, in one breath they're like, we have to save the arts, and it's like, yeah, 
the arts is in your feed. Help me out here, buddy. Please. <laughs> yeah, like I'm bringing my buddy Clint Long in, right? Like he's been making doors, and like he's a he's a fantastic video engineer and audio engineer. But um, he's been doing all these custom doors for people and these custom large large wooden pieces. Oh wow! Uh, and they come out great. They come out really fantastic. I'll be having him on really soon. He actually helped me out with the uh, the first Mac. Uh, we were talking about I was working on this thing on yeah. a laptop oh, okay. that first laptop that I was running on which I still use to do all my video or my uh, photo editing and uh -huh. uh, mobile editing when I'm out but um, yeah he he just was like here man I got an extra Mac lying around it's got everything in it fucking support bro you know it's that's like that's awesome and that's that's that kind of brotherhood that it really helps people grow because that saved me a lot of money in the in the front end of sure. this whole project sure. to where I could just get this off the ground, get it going. I mean, I can't thank him enough for that. And uh, that's awesome. And yeah, so yeah, we'll be seeing Clint on uh, Clint on the podcast as well really soon, showing off his art and everything. And cool. I'll cool. be supporting him, trying to get people to buy his doors or have <sighs> him, the custom painted doors that he's doing while we're all waiting for this production industry to come back and start paying our bills I again. Saw, I saw an article that made me scared. I saw an article they're talking because of insurance reasons that they're not they're, they're afraid they may not even come back as far as concerts go to like 2022 at this point because yeah. of the whole insurance issues that they're afraid of, which I, I, you know, I think what personally I would think if they were smart, and this is what thing I think is, I, think, I feel like a lot of these people are missing the cue. I feel like you have all these guys that could, you know, you could do a small show in a small arena or something and just film it and, and make people pay to watch it from their couches or something yeah i feel like that should be happening way more than it is like that like like disney plus grabbed that that like you know the the whole uh what was that, what was that musical they just had uh oh, hamilton. Yeah, hamilton and i watched it i watched it it was cool i, I would never have bought a hamilton i, I would never have gone and seen hamilton personally yeah uh, I, I don't I, know what it's about it's i mean it's, it's about, about it's kind of like a it's kind of like a, a musical with like a loose base reality of hamilton from you know from from history hamilton yeah. um and they have all the different historic people like george washington and things like that but the, but it's done well it's written it's written with like a little bit of a rap feel to it at certain parts <laughs> and uh, they do things in this musical that i think kind of like make it make it unique um but personally like i've I, that's the thing coming from broadway and then theater as a kid anyway from from lighting that stuff for years so to me i don't mind i love going to that like watching like chicago with my girl or going to the Broadway shows and stuff, uh, seeing Wicked or something, you know, we do all that stuff on the side, you know, that's kind of the thing that we enjoy, because to me it's another way of getting out there and enjoying culture and theater and stuff, but, um, but what I find funny is, like, if they're smart enough to do this stuff, and they video this stuff, and people can sit and do it, th there's no reason why they can't have these concerts that they can still make some money on and still have production involved. Yeah. How hard is it to get? Like, you know, I mean, yes, I know a, I know a show entails at least a dozen people to do a show, but you could temp check everybody, have them come in, make sure everybody's clean. Yeah. I mean, they got video, like I actually just heard the other day, they're going to be like some video game finals going on where the teams are just going to be quarantined for a couple weeks and then they're going to fly them out to China and put them in their own room to, to play against each other kind of thing. Wow. And so, the, yeah, so, so they'll make sure they're healthy for two weeks and then they'll just ship them off so they can have their, their big final battle of like League of Legends or whatever the hell it is yeah. and it's like on a local area network instead of the well of course they, they don't want it to be that because it, it does yeah. affect guys that are pros I would think like that yeah, you one little play. millisecond it does it, it does so like so they're being smart about it but they're not putting them in the same room they're putting them in two rooms near each other that are close enough that they could link it awesome. in and, and play so why can't you do a concert that way why can't you have like you get the band you yeah. get that you get the band you get your tech guy what do you need front of house you need a lighting designer you got you know put it in a venue like House of Blues it's already there yeah you know and set it up and do it and then just no audience, but do all cameras, and then just film it and charge for it, or do a do a yeah. thing like that. I think people would eat that shit up. I even want to start doing like virtual reality concerts, get permission from the band to mm. get a full mix, and like go in with some VR headsets, yeah. and and actually like. Well, they started doing in that. VR. In there that, is there's would, already a thing. Well, site they were doing around. it in that game. What is that? Uh, the the one. What's that game that everybody was all excited about? Uh, the one we were shooting everybody and building stuff. Uh, Fortnite. Fortnite. That's a ticket. That they were doing a, con a couple concerts in there. Some some some. Uh, they some, did concerts in Fortnite. They did concerts that's in tight. Fortnite. I actually heard about that. And then and it wasn't anybody like amazingly huge or anything, but it was yeah. enough huge. Like it was no name doing it that they were there performing in their Fortnite. Like you know in their that's house. So cool. And people appreciate it because they could sit in the game and go close and listen to the concert and they can enjoy it yeah. so 
I, it, you know, same thing is happening kind of with the the virtual talk of like Comic Cons and stuff like that. There's talk of like doing like these virtual. Like I wish that would be happening. Like well, do I'm like a virtual sure. Comic Con and yeah. have it where people can walk up and how hard is it to get like like I could put them, my art's all 2D. I could put like a JPEG of my shit like on a banner and people yeah. could say I want that piece and point to it and pay for it right then and there. It's doable. Somebody just needs to code the shit and make it happen and, mm. and figure a way that. It isn't gonna like you know. Oh, it's in already, man. Like a lot of the the convention work well, stuff like that. and things like yeah, that. Yeah, they oh, have shit, they sure. have VR cameras that you yeah. can walk around with, and it's capturing 360 the whole time. Yeah. And so they can set up the convention. They can walk the convention with a VR headset, yeah. and then they can uh, you can just run it through like a fucking PlayStation. Yeah. It's 300 extra bucks on your PlayStation, and you have a VR headset that you can walk around and interact with stuff. Yeah. And, it's just a matter and, of getting yeah. the right thing going and doing it right. I, somebody's got to do. I'm telling you right now, that's a that that's a money maker if it you is. figure out how to cla- like like lunge onto that and make it happen. Because honestly, it's just the way to go, especially in a reality like this where you don't have. Because that's the problem is like even the San Diego Comic Con online thing they did, there was nothing like that. You had to click on the same deal, which we'd basically click on anyway. If you're if I if somebody wants to find me online, they can find me online. So what's yeah. the beautiful of why, why who cares? It's at San Diego Comic Con or not, yeah. you know? And then you have to find my booth in the stupid giant map when you could just type my name in the website. You know, go oh let's go to this website. What, what do I care yeah. about all this searching through a friggin you know crazy map thing but if it was virtual and you're walking around with your silly little icon and you're seeing all these other cosplaying like people looking like i just visual like visualize like lego like a lego movie characters or yeah you like can that. have an avatar yeah, and so avatars, when you go to comic con you can everyone, just be an avatar everyone, instead well, everyone have avatars and they can be cosplaying with whoever they want because yeah. guess what you just pick the avatar of I'm going to be Batman right now. I'm going to be this. And it's a lot easier than dressing up, I guess. You just click on an avatar. And it becomes virtually that. I, they could I, sell special avatars. They could do. They, they could do, build the whole Comic-Con virtually. The whole Comic-Con virtually. Yeah. And then just it's, you're clicking on boosts yeah, and it'll take you to a website take to buy websites stuff. Websites to buy. Or you, you could, could do it all. I bet I uh, bet a lot of this will start getting like pushed. I hope like so. Like the VR I would experience love it, but, and the but, internet you know, experience of everything to like go out so and see the world. Yeah. And the, like I would design my booth. You could do, I could do my cool booth like with the lights and the right. TV flashing in the background visually where people, I would do it in a minute. It's just one of those deals where it's just, I, we just need to have the right people do it and the right people go for it. Cause yeah. it's a matter of it's it's money. It all comes out of money, but yeah, yeah, I, you know, but I think people would do it. I think they, the problem I think also is the greed because there's yeah. also a greed factor. Like right now there's people like, you know, there's celebrities doing all these at home virtual things right now that yeah. usually do comic con sign, you know, signings and shit. So you get all these celebrities. Like I actually had somebody get one of my pieces signed by a celebrity that they mailed it into and there was a picture of them holding my piece and they they did a whole virtual online thing like in a in, you know on Twitter or whatever. But what I think is happening is, is what's going to happen is, is once we stay back to the shows where a lot of these people were excited to get to meet like Captain America yeah. and Batman and all these kind of people. I think it kind of starts losing a little bit of the luster when I could say, oh, I could sit in my, on my couch and look at them virtually for like 20 minutes. And if I pay X amount of dollars, they'll give me a shout out or something stupid. Right. There's something about meeting people personally. And I think that's the real deal. I think that's really what it is. And when you kind of, when you take away the specialness about it, yeah, it's going to, we'll see how it goes down. I think next year, if we do get to do shows, they're going to be amazing because everyone's going to be so freaking oh, crazed dude. with being locked in their houses and enjoying it. Once it picks back up, we're screwed. Yeah. You know, like I am. You're I have plenty I'll, of work to do. I'll never have a fucking day off once yeah. it picks back up because they're going to have to be making up time. Everybody's going to want to go out. I got this fucking yeah. PA I'm written. Yeah. It's, it's going to be insane, man. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to be. I, I, I want to do this, though. You right. know, like, I, but it's all about making well, time for everything in a reasonable you thing. That, you hit that level where you decided yeah. you, you don't need to do it. And yeah. And you can keep putting I mean, it in here and this will slowly you, grow. And yeah. I mean, we'll I'm sure. Else. Yeah. I mean, and that's the deal. I mean, you, you have to feel you know, like we just like um, I, I, I'm going to give myself a little rah rah clappy thing, but I uh, I refied my house. Congratulations. Which was uh, was a big deal for me because, uh-huh. you know, we just bought this. We have brought a new house. This is our first full year being there because um, we bought it last year. And uh, the loan w- that I got with it was kind of shitty. Um, but that was what was available to me at the time because at the time um, my business wasn't as grown as big as it did, you know. Like I did, my 2017 to 2018 wasn't as impressive as my 2018 2019. Yeah. At least according to my the guy who did my loan work and all that. But so what ended up happening is um, 
yeah, when we saw this with the loans rates going down so low, I said, oh shit, maybe I can fix this problem. Because we had a, we had a, like I had, a, you know, I had like a seven percent interest rate. Jeez, man, and that's it was big. A P, and it was a five year arm that could have gone up or down. Oh, which really? They never go down. No, they only go up. And uh, why would they lower that? And the kiss of death uh, was they messed up my taxes on the house where they were only charging me the taxes based off of the land, not the house. So I was oh, hit with, uh, you know, for escrow, I was hit with like, I don't, I, you know, this is a boring talk, but I mean, point is, is I got hit with a huge number and was like, I need to fix this problem. And yeah. I lucked out and found somebody that was willing to work with me. And I guess to me, that just proves to me as an artist that I'm doing well when I can actually get a refi. Cause mm-hmm. they wanted everything they wanted. Yeah. They, there was no, there were, you know, especially to get like a locked, like I got a 3% locked interest rate and yeah. I was very proud of it. I'm very happy about it. But yeah, I had to prove all your income, everything. And of course I knew this was the time to play that game because I had a feeling that this year was going to be not as big as the last year. Yeah. So I figured before my, my, uh, my level, cause it's just the nature of it. I don't, I make way better money on the road at the shows. We do good money weekly, but it's not the same. So, uh, so we were like, okay, before we hit the fan, let's see if we can fix this problem. So we actually did. It took us a good, it took about a month of us bouncing back and forth and getting things. So like literally today I was like telling you, I might have a, like they're funding me today. Like I literally signed the paperwork last week. So I was like, you know, and it's, and it is, it's, it's cut my rate in half lower even. So I was like, yay. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm actually in the process of doing the same thing, trying to find somewhere where I can like move this whole huge production somewhere and get a secondary like space to where, my house is one thing and yeah. my work is separate because this whole blending my house and, and my work together is just rough, man. Like, well, but it's, it's as a person first that's, step getting to the next well, step. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to say, as a person that is now um, living with a studio in his house too, uh, just maybe just go bigger and you just get a place where you just make one room be the studio and that's, that's it. it yeah. And just do it that way. That way you don't have to, that way we don't have to leave the house to go to the studio, you don't have to put in pants in the right situation, and you can. <laughs> yeah, we were looking for something like a, that, that just has like a casita or like a second, like smaller guest house off sure, the yeah, side. Yeah, just yeah. turn the whole guest house into a studio. Yeah, yeah. Just fucking right down the middle, put a window in yeah, it, yeah, control yeah, yeah. room, live jam room. Totally. And it's like then what I would really like is when the I have a lot of musicians in, in bands on the show. I want them to be able to like Play. do a live yeah, song. Yeah. Oh, and it's like yeah. I have all this back line and yeah, all this equipment. Yeah. But it's like, man, I'm, no one wants to fucking see them jamming in my They're dining room. in your kitchen there. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's one thing to practice there with me and my friends I'm open and have the fridge. fun. <laughs> but it's like nobody wants to see that shit. So, yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit more of a even uh, diverse and multi multimedia kind of uh, podcast once we get the new place. But yeah, we just we we just filed all our paperwork. That's awesome. So, yeah. Good for you, man. Like, so. And that's and honestly, if you have good credit and yeah, all that, do. this is the time. This is this is the time to be making shit happen because they all they there's there's lots of wheeling and dealing going on, and that's a big deal. You know, it's, it's I heard they're going down real low. It's like September. It's supposed to go close to zero percent. Honestly, you know what, man? If it does, it's awesome. I, yeah. I right now, I, honestly, like I said, to me, I grabbed the best rate I could get for what I was going for right now. The biggest problem when the low, rates start going lower for me, for example, is that because I I, I had a large loan, yeah, um, to the point of I had to come in with a ton of money to bring it down because they, they originally was like a jumbo loan, and they don't have those right now because the rates are so low because people aren't going to give you that kind of money. So, um, so to get to that number they uh yeah i had to chunk out a big chunk of my stock portfolio and all that stuff Oof. which i was happy to do i was oh, yeah. you know i made the money on it that's what it was there for it was emergencies i didn't have to take it all away i i took about half of it but either way the point is is it, it, it was it saved me money in the long run because i did the math and i'm gonna like save like you know i'm saving like two grand a month nice so you know that times 30 years <laughs> which i don't plan to i'm gonna try and pay the house off in less than 30 years but we'll see you know it's like one of those deals where it's like 
you, you do know, what you do. You do the math, and it's like, oh my god! And so, so interest rates where once upon a time, I, you know, don't get me wrong. When I bought the house, I think we were just so ready to just say, I'll take whatever you give me, just give it to me. I want to get the house. Yeah, you know, because you're kind of like, you have your eyes stuck on this house that's being built, and you're like, I don't know, you know. And and they did. They they kind of preyed on me a little bit with the original loan because they didn't mm-hmm. try to do any better for me. They they played me like, oh, well, you're an artist. <laughs> 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 so they sold my like literally my loan got sold the moment I signed the paperwork. They sold it to another company. Oh, wow. So this one, these guys seem to have some faith in me. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited. They seem to be like, oh, you're actually, you're not, you know, they were actually really interested to know that I didn't take like a PPE loan and stuff like that. Like, you didn't take any of those loans? Or I was yeah. like, nope. Didn't do it. I was like, I can't even do unemployment. I'm making too much money. And they were like, all right, you're 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 actually a working person. Nice. <laughs> That's good. My, my unemployment hasn't come through for shit. Oh, Still. Oh, my God, dude. It's crazy. Well, they're already, cut, they're already crazy. cutting that extra money for people. So yeah. what would they do? They back pay you the whole thing when it finally comes through? Supposedly, that's what's going to happen. But, yeah. I mean, we'll see. I, I mean, they're already nice. getting they're already get. Did you get the, the $1,200 thing in the, at all? Did you get that? Yeah, I got that. I got the, the I had them take taxes out, so it was like 800 bucks. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, they're just uh, fucking up big time. The PUA is just not working. So it it's, is what it the is. The whole man. system's messed up. I mean, yeah. it's and then the fact that then you hear they gave the money to like people that like you know that, that are like these rich companies, and you're like, yeah. what? Like, why are sporting teams getting this? Why are why are why? You That's know, the world we live in, man. Like, Those what? people are the ones that are important in the world we live in. We need to get rid of the the system that's in place is not designed to take care of us. No. It's designed to take care of the people at the top, and they just keep handing money back and forth to each other. They take more from us, then they hand that back and forth to each other, take more from us. Yeah, that's crazy. And it's yeah. just, that's how it's going to keep going until somebody does something crazy and gets rid of all those fucking assholes. Yeah, it's so, hard. Or man. it'll just it continue into a dystopian future. One of the two options. Wow. But, yeah. yeah. So, hey, let me ha- check out some of those pictures. Why yeah, don't we yeah. show off these? We got this nice LED light, yeah. and uh, we're going we're gonna to shine these pictures in the camera. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, because uh, having been a, like a lighting director for like 20 years, one of the things I work really hard with my pieces, I kind of tend to put like, uh, and I actually show it because I do like lighting stuff in my booth and stuff, is that any light will reflect off these guys and kind of give them some color. So this is kind of like a, a pinkish LED. and You can just see how the, the reds pop really nicely in it. you know. So it's just kind of cool. The metal, because of the layering I put into the effect, it, it kind of looks almost, it, it gives like a multi-dimension feel like when different light hits and stuff. So. Yeah, it looks yeah, yeah. Show them all off. All right. So here is a. Uh, here's that one. There you go. So this is a. Uh, I'm a big Disney fan, so like this is my uh, interpretation of the uh, the the phantasmic experience where Maleficent uh, fights Mickey. You know, and it's a it's a cool show. I always try to watch that show whenever I can. And I go to the parks. And then the other one we got here. This one is actually the last time I was here. I, I had uh, my Stranger Things piece. This is actually my my published piece for uh, Ghostbusters. That uh, oh yeah, you got the book too. Right? Yeah, you have the book. Oh man, look at this thing. That is awesome. I love these metal pieces, dude. They are dope. Yeah, you got the book for that Ghostbusters. Yeah, thing? here's the book. The, the, it's actually tabbed to the the spot of where the. Right, this is the book that they're rocking. Go yeah. There it goes. It focused. <laughs> so. Oh, there it is. There's your piece, bro. Yeah, totally. Right, page 62. Yeah. So it was a cool. I, I you know, this is uh, the third book that uh, I'm being published in through. through uh, nice. con- and I do have another couple books I'm working on. You're showing this one. Oh, yeah, totally. This is mine. Yeah, it's his piece that I came this in. This is my signed. piece I like. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I call it Meeting of the Minds. Oh, um, look, at the, look at the light shine off of it like that. That's fantastic. It's pretty cool, right? That's perfect right there. So yeah, this is going. This is up in my house right here, along with some other. This is the comic book site you're talking about. Yeah, so that's what that's the way my pieces work. Is once all fifty of the large limited editions sell out, then I sell them on the comic size, and uh, that piece sold out really fast. That's a popular piece. Yeah, so that's one of the coolest pieces I've seen. <laughs> Thank you so much. You do. Yeah, those metal pieces are amazing. You just 
the camera definitely doesn't do it justice either. You got to see him. And it, it, yeah. Like, yeah, and it's, like my girls become like a master of photography on these things. Like between yeah. this and I also do these, uh, I, I do, I call them hollow foil pieces. It's like a reflective paper prints. Um, and it's like, she has to do like a video to just show people could see how the light reacts on these things. Cause when you take a 2d picture, it just doesn't do it justice. And then people will send me pictures of them in their houses and they say, look, when the night, hit, you know, when the sun hits it or when this, it looks, it just glows. And I'm just like, yeah, they're cool. I, I have so much fun when I make them. So That's it's just awesome. part of the whole thing, you know. I'm going to have to hang it somewhere where the sun can catch it. Totally, dude. You Check know, it out when you get a spots. chance to put the sun in on it. Just the, the sun, I mean, I think the sun is like the, you know, it just goes without saying, that's like the best light you got pretty much. But, I mean, as far as uh, incandescent goes or anything that's going to bring colors or pops, or, you know, I have people that take like whole LED setups where they'll do like lighting changes and they'll like do a whole wall of them and they'll pop and different colors bring out different looks of them and stuff. It's really fun. Dude, yeah, I think this is the next one we're going to get from you, too, by the way. Ah, the bars we did the, Dude, that's a killer piece. That's going to be hanging in my house. We watched that too. movie yeah, the other night. So Randy was so excited to watch that movie again. We haven't seen it in so long. There's so many good celebrities so in that movie, man. That. I mean, heck, Jack Nicholson plays two people in that movie. It's just crazy. Oh, that's right, because he plays the gambling guy or whatever, yeah, right? The cowboy. The cowboy guy and the president. So yeah. It's like, I mean, come on. You can't go wrong. Jack Nicholson is the president. <laughs> I vote for Jack Nicholson right now to be the damn president. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm ready for Terry Crews for president at this fucking point. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Bring it on. We're already halfway there. But yeah, so so it's, you know, this whole thing has just been, we're very thankful. I know there's a lot of crazy going on. We do feel for a lot of people that are suffering and dealing with stuff and struggling. And, I, you know, anytime I, you know, uh, anytime I, we get through the week and we have a good week, I always feel thankful that we could actually still, you know, that people are still supporting us and being there for us. Yeah, man, it is, uh... It's it's super important that uh, that support man and uh, hopefully fucking uh, hopefully everybody starts supporting each other a little bit more and helping each other out grow. Everybody started new projects uh, with this coronavirus. I mean, a lot of people have. And yeah, no, you get a lot of people a big like change in life. sitting at home and being like, oh man, I I've always wanted to do this. Well, now here's your chance because you ain't nowhere else to go and you can't even leave the house. That's so you it. might as well build that thing you were trying to build or paint that picture you're trying to paint or sculpt that thing you're trying to sculpt. There's tons of things. So I'm yeah. you know I would I would like to think. There would be a lot more creativity going on in all this instead of so much anger and hate, but we'll see. Time will go. <laughs> Some people are going to come out of this and realize that they wasted the most valuable year of their life. You know, like the world stopped for you. Yeah. The world has stopped for you right now. Like, get it done. Yeah. It's There's something that everybody has in the back of their mind that they always wanted to do and Think now is the it. fucking Every time, time it's like, oh, I always wanted to paint. I always wanted to write poetry. I've what been painting. It? See? And he's like, why can't... There's no reason not to. There's no yeah. reason not to. This is the time. Time to enjoy. You know, for me, it's kind of funny because like, like, like I'm I'm doing the same thing I'd be doing anyway, but yeah. once I'm on the road, I'm just drawing pictures and getting art, you know, getting my commissions done and stuff. So I'm pretty much living that normal life. And I, but even I'm like, oh, well, I'm home. Maybe I'll try and get my backyard done, do something yeah. like that, or start an exercise routine. Uh, I got to do something. I'm getting a little overweight, I, you know. But either way, the point, you know, I just think there's so, you got to take a little bit of positive with this because the yeah. fact is, is yes, there, you know, if you're healthy and you're doing the best you can, yeah, money's not perfect right now for some people, but you know, if you if you're not if you're not losing your house, you know, and if you can't get a job anyway, there's not much you could do about it. You might as well try and do something. You know, yeah, try and do creative. something. Maybe Start you'll come up it. with your next thing that'll make you a millionaire or something. That when this all cleans up, you'll be like, oh shit, I, you know, because there's always those stories. You always hear like yeah. like whenever somebody does something like amazing, like you know, or comes out with some amazing like comic book or or movie idea or something. There's always where'd you get that idea? It's like it's never like something like I was planning this for 20 years. No, it's something where I you know I slipped on the toilet and I basically like you know suddenly hit my head and next thing you know i thought about like you know these crazy like you know like like smurfs i you know i who knows yeah. you know what i mean it's like there's always something and this is that kind of reality where you're always like now you kind of have the time to think about things and plan and come up with ideas and try new stuff and you know or try to you know if you're if you're, if you're you know creatively cook or or eat or paint or anything i don't know i always there's always time there's you know it's hard to find time time is the number one th like when people ask me like what do you value most yes yeah. my fucking time it's i more value every than money. and it's and i've gotten my girl to the point where she gets angry at me about it. it's like you made me respect time because like when she's like i can only pack so many things up in a day or i can only do so many emails i can only handle so many business calls i can only do so much and it's like 
time. Yeah. That's where it is. So, you know. dude, I organize my shit, man. I and mean, like, like, like I said, we were waking up with the sun, going to bed with the sun, kind of thing. And yeah. it's, and that's so that we can get up super early. And it's like I got two hours of reading in front of me. Then I got two hours of working out. <laughs> yeah. And then I got you know thirty minutes meditation, yep. thirty minutes making breakfast. And it's like, um. You know, I don't get to do that when I have a fucking full time job. No, no. I don't get to do that with my life. You know, just you know, five six hours of me time, loving myself, taking care of myself, educating myself, yeah. and uh, and every single every single hour in the morning is just a super valuable uh, opportunity for me to get shit done. Well, like even in my like my commissions, like when people commission me for pieces. I always tell them, I'm always giving people worst case because they're like, how long is this going to take? And I say, yeah. look, I'm going to give you worst case scenario. It's probably going to get done sooner. But if I tell you the worst case and it gets done sooner, you're happy. Yeah. If I tell you a time that you, you know, if I said something like shorter and it didn't, it took longer, you'd get upset. So I'm going to tell you the shittiest time. And, yeah. and, and, and if it gets that long, don't be angry because I did the best I could. But at least now I gave you the worst case. And I do that. I tell people like now, my, now when somebody commissions me for peas, I tell them six to eight months. Yeah. That's your worst case scenario right now because I'm home. If I wasn't home, it would be doubled. Yeah. Because there were people that I, I started this year off probably with about 30. Like my commission list is like 50 now. But, it, but, but when I started the year, I had about 30, 35 commissions. And those people were knowing that it was going to be like a year to get those pieces because I was going to have shows in between. I can't draw when I'm at a show. I yeah. can't draw when I'm, I can't draw when we're driving in the truck either. I can only draw when we're stuck. Cause I don't like, you know, it's a, I hit a bump. I lose my ability to draw, you know, and stuff like that. So I only can draw when we're, when I'm sitting somewhere to draw. Yeah. So, and of course, after sitting in a truck for 12 hours, I don't want to, you know, you can't, it's not a forcing thing. So, uh, that affected my timeline. So now that I'm home, at first, I was like, oh, I'm crying through all these commissions. I'm going to do a, try and get at least a commission done a day. Here we go. Nice. And after a while, you get burnt out because Hell you're yeah. like, I'm just turning into like a machine of drawing and, and it, didn't, it didn't work that way. So I usually get now about two to three commissions done a week, which back in the day, I mind said, said about a one a week if I'm lucky. And it still works out. So people getting in my commissions, they feel like they're still getting done and they see the progression. They even see it more so because I every week I show the new pieces. So every week you're seeing my new stuff and everyone's like bidding or buying those pieces as they see them. So they're excited that that stuff is happening. But as far as like, you know, I still have to give, and this is where the biggest thing is, I have to give myself some time for me. And that's where I have to, you have to sometimes just not do anything. Yeah. It's taking time to uh, taking time to love yourself is super important. You just gotta, you know, you gotta take time out of your day yeah. just for you, yeah. just to do whatever it is that you need to do, whether it's you know exercise or healthy eating or meditating or reading, just something productive for yourself, man. You know? Well, and and don't get me wrong, when I'm doing like if I'm on the couch watching a show with with Serenity, or if we're or if we're just walking around the block or doing whatever we're doing. I still think about what I'm doing. Like always, I'm yeah. one of those people that don't shut my brain down. Like I have to be, I have to like, like for a person that doesn't like drink or do drugs, yeah. I really need, I don't shut my brain off ever yeah. unless I'm a, if I'm unconscious, that's about it. And then even then like Serenity is like, when you're sleeping, you do weird shit. You talk about things and stuff. So I'm even still probably going while I'm sleeping. That's what meditation's but, for, brother. You gotta, you gotta hone that instrument. It's a, it's a computer in your head that you gotta sharpen and focus and get it to just stop doing all the sporadic shit and go focus. Wow. I mean, I, it, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty focused at yeah. this point, but oh, yeah. the you point get shit is, done. is that for me, I'm always working on ideas. One way or the other. Yeah. But to, I feel like I'm a better uh, artist when I'm not rushed on it. And that's the biggest thing. I think any artist is that way. When you make somebody be like, you got to have this done by tomorrow or else you're fucked. Yeah. It's never going to be the same as somebody who, like, said, take your time, make it beautiful, and enjoy it and make it nice. Yeah. You know, some people need that. There are some people out there that I think if they didn't have, like, a like a deadline, they'd be like, oh, I'll get it done eventually. Some people are still drawing their first piece. Yeah. But plenty of people me, like that. And, you know, anybody that has, like, and I think, and this is something I think with the production industry taught me is, is I have to be there for the job. I have to show up early. If I'm yeah. 15 minutes, if I'm not 15 minutes early, I'm late. Yeah. Uh, but I have to put my time and mental thing into it to make it work. Yeah. And that's the type of thing that I do put into the, my, my, uh, you know, and that's how we've been as successful as we have been. Cause I don't just, I, you know, I think, I think everybody when this whole started was like, what the fuck are we going to do? Yeah. And that's why when we jumped on this whole, let's do a weekly show, let's get this going. Let's get our, you know, get our, 
commissions going and get our fans happy and and we've been able to pull that off i know a lot of people didn't do that yeah i know a lot of people started trying to do things like that but maybe lost interest um but we'll see where we're at in six months from now. See who's, you know, who's starting their, oh, I'm going to just start my online thing in December when it's already time to go back to shows. Yeah, go back now. to work now. Yeah. yeah. So who knows how that's going to work. But I'm just very thankful that I've been positive enough to do it. I've been able to uh, be inspired to be, uh, to, to create and my fans seem happy. And we're doing well that way. And I'm just excited to come back and do this with you again because this was like kind of like one of those fun full circle things in a way. Because it's it like, is, right? you know, I started this with you like when, like at the beginning when you did it. Now you've grown and we're, you know, we're adapting and changing too. So it's kind of fun to see, you know, and again, you know, I think we'll have to do like, we should do like a four month every four months to like a check in yeah, or something like that. We definitely should, man. Yeah. I love having you on the show and Thank you can always have new art pieces and new things to oh, talk totally, about. Dude. In four months, you kidding me, dude? I'll probably have like, we're getting 30 new pieces to show you. Yeah, man. <laughs> I want you to be a regular guest, yeah, bro, coming on, you. showing off your art, talking about stories of the past and, and and all the cool shit that's been going on in your life, man. I mean, yeah, what else am I going to do? I'm putting one of these things out every Monday, baby. So it's like, you know. <laughs> the funny the, the, the thing, I'll tell you barrier. what's funny is uh, a lot of my fans who have been really, you know, supportive with us through this whole thing, they asked, they were like, well, when you go back to doing shows, are we going to get this still? And I was like, Wow, that's pretty cool that somebody, they love yeah. what we're doing so much that they're, and we do, we decided that when we do go back on the road even, we're probably going to, you know, save yeah. a, save an hour or a half hour a week and do a live broadcast from whatever show we're at. And yeah, maybe you can do have it right from stuff. the booth. That's exactly it. And then it's easy because then like, yes, unless we're swamped with bodies standing there, mm. I can still sell things and give some peaks to the, yeah. to the people that'll tune in. And the funny thing is, is that I've already got some fans that were like, if I wouldn't go to this show, if you weren't even there, so why would I, you know, so <laughs> I've got people that are not going to shows if we're not at shows, but if we're at a show, and they can't make it to that show, but they can watch us. They may just sit on their couch and buy some more art with me because then I don't got to yeah. buy a ticket. You don't go buy a ticket. You can just buy it online for me. So it kind of works yeah. out that way because there's lots of time. Like when like I had a lot of people like when shows were getting canceled, they were like, well, I don't have to pay to this show. So I'll just buy it directly from Jerry. Boop, and they order online from us. So That's fantastic. it's 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 kind of cool that I'm getting that. And I'm very th dude. I, like I said, I'm so thankful for that. I just want to keep doing better. Nice. Nice. Well, you know what? I think that's a perfect point to shut this thing down. <laughs> yeah, we're getting up to the two hours. You and I, you and I, it goes by so fast. I could talk to you forever, man. That's, I know, you know man. It's so I, much fun. Thank you, man. I, you know, and again, like, thank you for having me on this. And I, and I do, like I said, I'm gonna make sure our fans check all this out and make thank sure to see you. you and, and hopefully, they'll, you'll get some fans from that too, because they're they're, so. they're good people, and I think they'll appreciate the stuff you bring. You know, and that'll be all like, are welcome. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right on. Oh uh, well, you know what? Let's uh, let's do some promotion here. Huh? Okay. We got uh, we got the Yep. Definitely go check out PeshEffects.com. That's our website. And then we got the uh, the CouchCon for the uh, Book of Face. Yes, the easiest way to follow us if you go on our Facebook page. It's a good mm -hmm. way to see everything. It's Pesh Effects. Uh, the Pesh Art Effects. of Jerry Pesh. That's the way to find us on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, social media. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter. We are on Tumblr and all that stuff. But honestly, Facebook is the easiest way for us to do the live broadcast. So that's a good way to keep on the news. That's where you're going to see all the new pieces we come out with. That's a good, you know, that's where you're going to see me dance around like a little monkey every Friday night on the we used to we even tried to do uh, Facebook is funny that way they try to do like the live broadcast from their actual events and they they, they literally were dropping the ball on that so much I have to do it directly from our Facebook page because Jeez. they would literally my fans would be commenting and they would be getting they'd be getting kicked out for commenting too much really yeah it was like 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 well shouldn't i be the one to determine if somebody's like spamming my page or spamming my event that's like, absurd yeah so it was something to do with the events um i don't know if you noticed know also but facebook changed its whole layout recently yeah i did and notice. it raped like my girl almost threw her laptop out the window because it was like oh, yeah. it changed the whole layout of our stuff so so all kinds of weird things going they're on. they're changing stuff with the what they're doing if you ask me is i think they're trying to get to the point of making people who are doing all these events try and yeah. pay for them and yeah, I think they're trying to make money off that. Now I pay for advertising, but I pay I, for the advertising. My too. events are free. I make my people come in because I want them yeah. to buy my art. I don't want to give five bucks to Facebook for somebody to be looking at me for twenty minutes. That's yeah. not what it's about. It's ridiculous. So that, there's things afoot that I'm kind of nervous about, but I'm hoping that they'll just kind of say, "All right, never mind, just leave it alone. It's not, it's not broken. Don't fix it." You know, so that type yeah. of thing. But again, yeah. So we're on all that. We're on Facebook. I'm always. He's on um, Instagram too. Yeah, we're on Instagram. Uh, again, Seren Serenity is the uh, person who posts 
regularly. She takes care of me. I draw the pretty pictures. She makes sure the business runs. We love Serenity. And, uh, I'm hoping to have her on one of these times. She was like, yeah. she was. I talked to her. I said, you want to come be on the show this time? She was like, I got so much work because that's the problem. She's got yeah, so much work to do. She's so good. But I'm gonna. Yeah. But that's that's the way it is. Like she's. Dude, we got the big couches. Know, we got multiple microphones know, that we can set up. I have bands maybe, on here. You know so. what? Maybe what you do. Maybe what you do is one of these times come come be a guest star on a show. Please, yeah. Maybe do that. I'll come check that out. Dude, come do yeah. the. You could be the. You could come in and talk and, and do something like that. I don't we'll know. Hang we'll figure out. it out. We'll figure it out. Because it's it, it's crazy. It is it is amazingly nuts, um, but it's fun. I really get to like you know like I said, I have so many fans that are just coming in, and we had people like this week from like Anime Expo that came in that hadn't seen the live show yet. We had people from other shows because they're all coming in. They're like, "Where's Jerry? Where's Jerry? Oh, good to find him." They're making sure I'm not like leaving like dead in the street somewhere, like like yeah. you know just dying or something because I can't be at these shows. But you know, it's neat. But I have yeah, it's just a crazy reality, man. I'm just very thankful. I like that. Yeah, I'll definitely have to stop. I mean, I'll bring some magic cards over, <laughs> and we'll fucking. I just built all those magic decks. We'll play some fucking Dude. some new commander or something like That's that. That's my problem. I don't have any. I don't have physical. Like I have. I have, I have old so physical many. decks, but I have to like make like real decks again. Like that's a problem. Yeah. Man, Magic Gathering. I love that game so much. I. You know, it's it's scary because it's. I always said I'd get out of that crack, and I keep getting back into it. It's too good. It's just too good. It's the best game ever it's made. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. All right. So, anyways, we're getting out of here. I got to pee. This has been To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. I'd like to thank my guest, Jerry Pesh, once again. Thank Amazing artist. Uh, yeah. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.